Yes, guys, you know what time it is. It's your boy, David, at the Irish Hotspur, Ireland's number one Spurs fan, bringing you the Tottenham fan call-in show with co-host Jack Kinnicky. And look, we have a lot to dissect today. We have the Palace defeat. We want to know what your thoughts are coming into the Rens game, Europe uh, Conference League expectations and all that. But Jacko, it's our favourite time of the week, isn't it? We get to meet the Harris Army. No, we get to always meet the Harris Army, especially, you know, after maybe a very uh, dismal defeat like this. Maybe they can actually offer maybe a bit of optimism, David. Maybe they'll point out something that we missed, you know, from uh, from our post-match review. You know, the Harris Army can be plenty relied on, you know, when giving us that expert analysis, uh, especially even in defeat, they can still give us that expert analysis. But hopefully they'll also lift our spirits a little bit, David. No, 100%. I'm sure they will. They always do. You know, they're a good bunch. We've got a few co uh, comedians in the chat as well, so I'm sure they will. But look, look, let's welcome in some of the Harris Army. Philip Brady was in nice and early, said, could be a long show. It could be. Could be. Sue Smith says, many of the problems from last season not addressed. Creative mid needed a striker. Sonny easily our best and most influential player. And hashtag Harris Army. Hello, Sue. I hope you're doing well. I hope, hope things are good with you. Brian says, big up, guys. Won't be able to watch the show today. But I'll tune in later. Come on, you Spurs. Big up, Brian. Really appreciate that, my man. Um, Sean, um, Sean Byrne Football Channel. Where, um, where do, where does everyone think Spurs will finish? Uh, I think fifth. Well, I'm still gonna have confidence. I'm gonna say fourth. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep saying it until it's mathematically impossible. So you may hear that for a while to come yet, Jackal. I, think we're gonna finish. I mean, a lot of people have said they would be very satisfied with top six this season. So, and David, me personally, I would be absolutely over the moon for top four. So I'm going to go with you, David. I mean, I'm going top four and then maybe I'll just pull myself back towards the mm -hmm. end of the season in case we're not there. But again, I would still see top six as a victory. Of course, I'm very, very optimistic. Uh, but as well, I think we do have to consider that, you know, it, top four to begin with, maybe towards the end of the season, maybe we have to roll it back. No, 100%. Uh, that's brilliant. Put myself back. Uh, look, let's keep moving. We have Adam says, big up, lads. Hope you're keeping well. Big up, Adam. We're good. We're good. Uh, Mr. Edwardson said, the Irish Hotspur. Hey, David and Jack and chat. Good good evening, Mr. Edwardson. Hope things are well. Chris was in. He says, uh, we were an absolute mess on Saturday from the team selection to the tactics. It was a very Josie-esque setup. Not impressed Strong words from Chris. I'm sure. I'm sure he'll be on in a while to. Uh, Two out of five stars from Chris. Two out of five stars from Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Adam McFarland says my team against Chelsea is Romero, Sanchez, Roden, Hoiberg, Lacelso, Endon, Berg, Endon, Bele, Bergvine, and Kane. Interesting, interesting lineup there, my man. Uh, Catman Jess says anyone watching Everton versus Burnley game second half has been really entertaining. I didn't. I'm not really to be honest with you. Um. <laughs> um but, uh, Jack, you, you were watching it? No, I wish I was, actually, especially because I am part of maybe the, the Spurs version of the Chris Wood fan club because, you know, a lot of people have been speaking about that striker that we needed, that backup striker, and I've always said, you know, the one that I would take over Vinicius just because he'd be a lot cheaper as well would be Chris Wood. So anytime I'm watching Burnley, I'm just watching Chris Wood is what I would say. But, unfortunately, David and I have been pretty busy preparing for the week uh, for today. So, you know, I wasn't actually able to have the game on. I probably should have had it on in the background while I was working. So maybe next time I'll do that, Jess. No, hundred percent. And look, we're very busy week ahead this week. I'm sure uh, we'll let you know at the end what's coming up on both channels. Very busy week. James Redmond says, Rafael Benitez, uh, uh, I call a proper manager one nil down to Burnley tonight, makes changes, suddenly goals on the 60, 65, 66 to lead three, one at 75 wow. minutes. Yeah, look. Sounds Rafa like some good there. highlights, Dave. Sounds like some good highlights. Maybe we'll have to we'll have to watch the whole thing, maybe just from start to finish. No, hundred percent. I think we will. Dtrex Kane says, "Harris Army, we are back. Remember this from uh, this from me. Roden will be the guy. I want to see Amole, Pascotti, and Marcande versus Renz. Yeah, well, look. I'm sure their hats in the ring. hundred percent. I'm sure their hat is in the ring. And um, we have David says, "Hi everyone. Uh, it's a new week. Hopefully, we uh, see a change of attitude from some of these players." Really hope Nuno you know, figures out what's best for the team ASAP. Yeah, 100%. Look, it's going to take time and we just have to have to see what happens. Look, uh, no way am I turning on Nuno yet. I'm just making that one very clear. No way. I can see I can see faults. I, I do blame him for a bit of what happened on against Palace, but I still blame some of the same old players. Definitely not turning on Nuno nowhere near yet. But, uh, I think he will figure it out, David. And by the way, great name. Love the name. Name of champs, name of king, name of winners. Uh, Mr. K says, uh, come on, you Spurs. Hi, everyone. We have uh, Anthony Berryman says, blind me from first to seven in three days. 
uh, could only happen to this club. Yeah, but we're still only one point off top, so that's all that matters, Andy. Uh, Anthony, that's all that matters, my man. Who else have we got here? Uh, we've got Derek Hutchinson says, big up you two guys, big yourself up, Derek Hutchinson. Oh, we have uh, Aaron Dove says, Connors Atatu, big up Aaron Dove, hope things are well. Amzo, big up Irish Hotspur and Jack, hope you guys are well. Amzo, we're good, I hope you're good as well, my man. Big yourself up. Paro Miguel Escobardo says, hello, Harris Fla and Flat Cap Army. Big yourself up, my man. Big up, Paro Miguel Escobardo and Catman Jess. Absolute legends of the Flat Cap Army, David. They are absolute legends of the Flat Cap Army, Catman Jess and Paro Miguel Escobardo. What I'll tell you also, Paro Miguel, I told you, I, I just said your name out loud one time, or the, I forget how it went down. The missus was either looking over my shoulder when reading one of your comments uh, on Flat Cap Bureau Talk, or I just read your name out, out, out aloud to her. She just said, what a name. That's all she said was, what a name. Paro Miguel Escobardo, named of kings, David. Sounds like the name of a king. Definitely does. It definitely does. Just rolls uh, off the tongue well. It definitely does. It definitely does. Let's get a few more of these in, and then we have a lot of people in the background waiting and a few super chats to get to as well. But first of all, if my mommy is watching, a big happy birthday to my mother. We had a party for her yesterday. It's our actual birthday today. So, hope a uh, big happy birthday to my ma if you are watching. And I uh, hope you really enjoyed your day as well. Um, Dark Sung G says, hopefully, Stevie and Son uh, and Gil uh, Hill. Will be uh, ready for the blues. Yeah, I, I hope so. Uh, Jacko, what, what's your thoughts? I would definitely like to see maybe Stevie uh, come in for the Blues, especially because he did so well against City, especially his progressive carries against City and his ability to set himself up in those positions to just drive the ball forward. He did absolutely fantastic. Hopefully he could do the same against Chelsea. So, yeah, I would say Stevie and Sonny are absolutely vital to to Chelsea, I would say. Uh, Brian Hill, I would love to see as well, David. Absolutely dark sun G. But Stevie and Sonny for me are crucial, I would say, for the Blues. Yeah, 100%. Big yourself up, Dark Sun G. I'm sure you have a lot of stats for that game as well, my man. Uh, Dave Tyson says, big up, lads. Big up, Dave Tyson. We have Golden Cock in the house. We have Tim Man 007. Awesome all. Brian C., big yourself up. Big up, lads. Looking forward to some better football on Thursday to erase the memory of last Saturday. I hope mm. so, my man. I hope so, Brian. And uh, me and Jack will be doing a watch along for it if anyone does want to tune in for that game as well, guys. Um, Dark Sung G says, no catastrophe, an easy pass for Chelsea, or I will rage. Yeah, look, I don't want to see them anywhere near it. We can never start with these guys again. I'm, I'm strongly of that opinion now, and I'm not changing it. I'm not giving any fake optimism behind it anymore. No way. For me, we just cannot play them any longer, and it's as simple as that. I would say to Dark Sun G quickly, you know, I know I've already hired you, you know, to be alongside Nuno for the tactics, you know, for also the youth academy development, you know, Dark Sun G, I think you'd be crucial for that here, but as well, you know, Dark Sun G, if you're willing, maybe be a bouncer for this game, just so you wouldn't let maybe Winks and uh, and Davies into the dressing room. If you're capable of that, Dark Sun G, I mean, he would be, be David. I mean, all the things we're asking of him, if he were able to pull that off as well, Dark Sun G, just let me know if you have any, you know, security guard skills or anything like that, just to keep him away from the dressing room as well for the upcoming match. 100%. Big yourself up, Dark Sonji. Really appreciate the support, my man. And uh, yeah, look, uh, definitely don't want to see you raging, my man. Make sure you get some food into you before this game. Can't <laughs> have you have a week without eating, my man. Um, Jiminy, big up, Jiminy. Hope things are well with you, my man. Says, bottom line is Sonny can win without Kane in this team. Kane can't win without Son. And that's become clear. Uh, this game, he was so slow. Jack, what would you say to Jiminy? Jiminy, I don't want to read too much into that, you know, where Kane can't win without Sun, but Sonny can win without Kane. I just feel like they offer, they're both world-class players who both complement each other in a world-class way. Jiminy, though, I will say, like I maybe just said in the Chelsea game, maybe I was even hinting at maybe agreeing with you a little bit because I would say Sonny is absolutely crucial to a game like Chelsea. You need someone with pace, hey, someone with intelligence and the way they make runs as well. Also finishing ability, of course, but I would say, you know, we are sometimes maybe sniffing at maybe the numbers or even just forgetting the numbers like Harry Kane had last season. He had the most chances created for us. He had the most through balls for us last season. He had the most shot creating actions last season. Uh, he, I believe, had one of the most take ons uh, completed in the box that led to a shot last season as well. I mean, I could lift stop more of the stats with Jack things to, to compliment Harry Kane. But all I will say is two world class players that absolutely complement each other. And I would never like to think, you know, of being without any of them, really. No, no, 100%. Look, Jiminy, it's one I, I, I'm not going to get you on into this debate whatsoever. Look, for me, I just think two world-class players in the team, I think they both complement each other perfectly. Um, and that's that's where I'm at. And that, look, I can totally see where everyone's coming from. You know, with, with, with Son, um, 
you know, with his stats and, and stuff like that when Kane's not in the team. I fully get it, but there will be a month where, look, maybe some might not have a, a good month and Kane will pick up the slack. Look, some definitely does pick up the slack, 100%. But I'll be honest with you. I'm just happy both of them are here. I'm not. I'm not going to be drawn into that debate. No way, my man. Be it's yourself. a tough one, though. You do want to. You do sometimes want to put your little. Maybe I did, Jiminy. Maybe I gave you a little hint at maybe what I what I think. But that's actually how I thought about it. I don't really even want to give an answer to it because I don't really have you know a real feeling towards it because it just would pain me to be without both of them to be without such a world class player on either side. Yeah, I don't even like to get in those sort of debates. But Jiminy, maybe you got a little bit of an answer from me. Hopefully. No, 100%, 100%, but big up, uh, big up, Jiminy. I hope things are well with you, my man. Paul Markey says, time to cash in on a disinterested cane unless Winks and, uh, uh, useless Winks and buy a creative midfield uh, plus two. Um, look, we'll wait and see. Kane does notoriously start slow to the season, but look, I get it. I was pissed off with him Sunday. Um, Philip made a great point as well, saying that um, you know, he wasn't really shouting and all like he usually does. Um, so look, I mean, I'm gonna wait another couple of games to judge whether he's disinterested or not. I look, I definitely think we'd look, everyone knows my opinion on Winks, just can't start him anymore, can't play him anymore. Look, maybe you can bring him off the bench, but I definitely don't want to see him starting North Tottenham Jersey. And uh, we definitely need to buy a creative midfielder 100 percent my man. I couldn't agree more. Jack, what's your opinions? I would just maybe touch on the disinterested Kane part. I do agree with you, David. I think I would have to wait a few more weeks just to maybe confirm that for me. I mean, I'm not as much of maybe a, a sports, you know, kind of psychologist in that regard where I can read their faces and maybe understand them. But all I would say is, uh, Paul, I really feel like, you know, Kane is actually, you know, going to be trying his season. Some have even said, or I forget who said it, but someone had said, you know, in the Harris Army that, you know, Harry Kane does start seasons off very slow. And so maybe this could be an example of that. Uh, but all I would say is, Harry Kane, I really hope he isn't disinterested because then all of our answers before about whether he would down tools or not, and we basically all unanimously said he wouldn't, if that were to be proven the case, I would be very, very, I feel kind of betrayed, I would say, but I don't think that's going to happen, Paul. 100%, 100%. But look, big up, Paul Mark. You appreciate the support, my man. And um, yeah, look, I can definitely see why you do think he is disinterested. But look, you know me, I, I hang in there a bit longer than others. Uh, so I'm going to wait another couple of games. But big up, Paul Mark, you really appreciate it. Two more super chats to get to, Jacko, and then we will get on the first guest. Uh, David, uh, big up, David. He says FIFA 22 ratings are out. Kane is rated 90. <laughs> Sonny is rated 89. Davies, Alex, look, I don't know if Alex is watching. But um, look, I'm not sure uh, what rating Dave he's got. But, I, I uh, reckon maybe a seventy, a cheeky 75, Dave. I think he's probably been given a cheeky 75. Maybe, I mean, to be honest, I'd love a 68, you know, personally. That, you know, I, I, do, like, I do like a good 27-year-old 68-rated player. Uh, but all I can say, Dave, is I'm going to say he's going to get a 75. Yeah, yeah, I think so as well. I think so. I, uh, maybe, maybe a bit lower, maybe a bit lower, maybe a 72, Whoa. 73. But um, yeah, K90. Yeah, I definitely, um, you know, I have to show Jack how to use a Harry uh, a 90 rate and Harry Kane when FIFA 22 comes out. Big up, David. Uh, Dan N says, uh, Palace game raised an interesting question. Is Kane's involvement more crucial to Sun's success or Sonny's more crucial to Kane's? Yeah, look, another good question on the Kane and Sun debate. Look, one I that look, I, I've stated loads of times, I'm not going to get drawn into this for me. I'm just delighted to have two world-class players in the Tottenham team. And uh, that's where I'm going to sit on this. So, look, I'm going to hand this one over to Jack and put him in the firing line. <laughs> They're pressing hard on this debate. I absolutely love the Harris Army. You know, Dave, they just want to go deep into it. You know, they just are willing to take off the gloves, you know, just go right into the debate. Uh, but big up the Harris Army. Big up you, Dan Ann, as well. I'm going to give my answer again. Maybe I'll just go a bit harder on this one. I would say maybe Sonny, just so I can satisfy maybe some people in the chat, I would say Sonny might be more crucial sometimes in maybe games where – uh, we are going to be without the ball for the majority of the match, 30, 40% possession. We saw how much we relied on pl players like Sonny against uh, Man City in the past. We saw how much we relied on Sonny in the Man City game this season. Uh, and as well, you could probably say against other big teams that will dominate us in possession and probably pin us in our own half. Having Sonny, I might argue, is probably a bit more crucial than having Harry Kane. But then I would digress, David, and I would say who's going to be playing those balls in behind for Sonny. You know, it's a two-part system. It is a two-part game. You have to realize, you know, somebody's going to have to play those balls in behind for Sonny. Someone's going to have to be able to see his movement before he even uh, notices that he's been seen. So 
All I can say is they are absolutely crucial for each other. But there you are, Dan. Maybe I'll just say is that Sonny might be more crucial sometimes for some of these bigger games where we're going to be without the ball for the majority of the match. Yeah, do you know why? It's a great question, Dan, I have to say. It's a very good question. Um, look, I'd go more along the lines of uh, what Jack has said. Look, the bigger games where, you know, Son uh, can exploit things and he has the pace and everything else, um, you know, and there's more more space for him to run into, I do think he's probably a bit more crucial. Um, but look, Kane's just as equally as important. Kane, Kane chips in with goals and assists as well. So look, for me, I'm still going to say I stand where I stand on this one, my man. Uh, I'm firmly on the fence. I, I, I'm just delighted to enjoy two world-class players. Dark Sun G says, if Kane doesn't show up for the Blues and Gunners, look, I hope that's not the case. I want them to show up for both. Look, the Blues one, I think, is going to be a very tricky game. I'll be honest. I think Chelsea will walk the league. That's just my opinion. But look, uh, I, I think Kane will show up for Arsenal. He loves the goal against Arsenal, to be fair. He's a very good record against Arsenal. So uh, I'd expect him to score against Arsenal. That's for sure. Big up Dark Sun G. And then Jerry says FIFA has Davies leadership at 99. Uh, yeah, definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> definitely definitely not. Definitely Jerry. Jerry's definitely having the laugh. He's definitely having the laugh. No, look, leadership would probably be at 29 because he doesn't show any. You know, he was stuck in with a young Roden there, and young Roden showed more leadership than Ben Davies. Uh, but big up, Jerry. Love the show. Anonymity. Shit. Dave, anonymity probably at 99, if not 100. Uh, you probably say, you know, his anonymous rating is probably at 99 or 100. You know, how much can a player, you know, disappear in a FIFA game? Probably his is very high in that regard, I would say. 100%. 100%. Big up, Jerry. Really, really appreciate it. And look, guys, keep, everyone keep letting us know on the Kane and Son debate, to be honest with you. Look, let us know your opinions. Let us know your thoughts. And uh, look, Dan N, Jiminy. Dark Sun G, they all know where they stand on it. They're Seems to be the flavor of the week kind of debate. I'll be honest with you, the longer time goes on, I am starting to maybe fall on the sunny side of the fence. Um, but look, uh, I'll wait to see what this season has to unfold. Uh, and uh, I, I maybe might address that a bit later on in the season. But I think I am starting to fall on the sun side of the fence, though. But guys, look, if anyone has any stats, any comments, try and get them in to convince me to firmly be on the sun side. But look... Make sure you do smash a like on the stream, guys, and subscribe on the channel if you're new. Uh, if you do want to come on and have your say, um, you know, obviously members um, will get priority. If there is enough time after, we will open it to the general public, but that doesn't usually happen. So if you want to skip the queue, guys, get that white membership and come on and have your say. The link is pinned in the description below or in the chat here. And as well, look, you know, Get your super chats in, guys. It is a great way to skip the queue if the channel is if the chat is flying. But also, it's a great way to keep showing your support for me and Jack. Keep keep helping us do what we do out here, and you know, keep providing more and more quality content. And um, so, yeah, look, get the super chats in. It is a great way to support us. But look, let's start welcome. Let's get in some of the the members here, Jack. It's a guy we haven't seen in a while. He's a uh, he's a guy that's uh, you know about an hour away from me in County Offaly. And it's my man, Joe. Joe, how are you keeping? <laughs> Yeah, great lads, how are you? Oh, good. Oh, good. So, look, what's your thoughts on the Palace game, Joe? It was soul destroying. <laughs> <Good life. laughs> was, uh, yeah, I just, uh, with, with the, as soon as I seen the lineup, I was like, uh, this game is over before it even starts. And, mm. uh, yeah, and yeah, I just, it was just very, it, it should show basically. Did you were you kind of maybe praying to be proven you know wrong maybe in that regard on the and uh, uh, in terms of the lineup you know uh, Joe or do you feel like you know there was just no hope from the beginning? Uh, there was no hope from the beginning, lads. To be honest, oh. it was just yeah. it was just it was dead. It was absolutely dead. And um, mm. yeah, it was, a, it was a game that we should have uh, we should have um, should be winning and we should be going in there on the front foot creating chances and we did jack shit. So it was it was a it was a poor day at the office, and um, yeah, I'm not looking forward now to, to Chelsea this weekend. It's going to be uh, a bit worried for that now. Usually, not worried for for Chelsea. Usually, I usually have my have my chest out, you know, to one of our biggest rivals. But uh, yeah, I'm not yeah. looking forward to it now. Yeah, I, 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 and look, do you know, with, with with the team selection, you know, what kind of gave you no hope before we went into the game? Mm. Yeah, just the three, the three uh, defensive midfielders. So I was looking at this like, where's the creativity coming from? I didn't really, didn't really know what position Deli Ali was playing either. He was, he was mm. supposed to be, he was supposed to look, I think he was supposed to be like number ten, but he wasn't really a number ten. He's kind of more back, yeah, back and um, pick up the ball from deep, and um, 
yeah, just uh, the one Emerson was making good runs down the right hand side, and n- none of the boys were, were passing it to him, and they would always taking the safe option, and yeah, it was just very frustrating. Yeah. Joe, what do you feel like was the biggest lesson uh, before we get to Dark Sun G Super Chat? Uh, Joe, what do you feel like was the biggest lesson then that we probably took then, either from that lineup that you're speaking of or just maybe even the Deli Alley position that you also mentioned? What do you feel like was the biggest lesson that, you know, maybe you as a fan learned or even Nuno learned? Yeah, just that uh, you have to, we have to start creating more chances and start mm-hmm. being more on the front foot. Right. And uh, and stop to stop uh, trusting some of these players because... <laughs> they've had their they've had their they've had their chance now and like when when's it gonna end like like enough is enough with some of these yeah. guys and uh, I don't know how it can't go on much longer now and um these guys have had more than enough chances, chance after chance for the last five four or five years and they they haven't improved and they're not going to improve so yeah. to get them out get them out. Yeah. 100%. Uh, just quickly, Joe, we take Dark Sun G Super Chat, and then I want to get your thoughts on Nuno not using uh, uh, Brian Hill at all. Um, after that Palace game, I started to play uh, PES 2021, and right away I cancelled Catastrophe and Easy Pass. I hope Sar doesn't come for uh, for the October match for Korea. Uh, look, Dark Sun G, I, the first thing I do is sell Ben Davies and Winks every single FIFA football manager, Pro Evolution, whatever it is, first thing I do is sell them straight away. And um, yeah, look, uh, look, I'm glad you want Son to stay. I think we all wanted to stay away from internationals for for a little while. But uh, Jack, what do you want to say, Dark Sun G, quickly? All I can say to Dark Sun G is I do have a bit of a nightmare story in the regards of FIFA. In that case, I did cancel uh, one every time I open the Tottenham career mode. I absolutely cancel uh, Winks and Davies contract right away. Don't even sell them, David. I just cancel it. Paid out, you know, myself even from my own manager wages. Uh, but as well, I then one time, David. I actually tried to include Aurier and I think uh, Sissoko as well in terminated contracts. And actually, Daniel Levy ended up firing me in the first season because of that, uh, because of my uh, financial mismanagement, uh, clearly. So, Dark Sun G, all I can tell you is just don't terminate too many contracts at once because Daniel Levy will be after you. 100%, 100%. Big up, um, big up um, Dark Sun G. I really appreciate the support, my man. What a legend. What an absolute legend. Um, but look... Um, you know, Joe, what's your thoughts on Nuno not using Brian Hill at all? Does um it, does that maybe show that maybe he doesn't trust him or, or what would you think? Yeah, maybe he doesn't think he's ready for the Premier League yet, but he's the only one in, in our team this the, the season that we that we've seen that that could has an eye for pass and that wants to get on the ball and be be uh, be proactive and look look to create chances and yeah, it's, it's, um, I said it in in the watch along there. I want to see him on, hill on for uh, one of the, the three midfielders and never materialized i think there was people saying that he's he was supposed to come on before the before the red card but mm. i still would have i still would have brought him on anyways sure we needed it we needed a goal and it was regardless if we were down to 10 men or not so yeah yeah and the game was still in the metal pod that stage and palace aren't they're not, they're not a great side we could still could have broke them down even even with 10 men so yeah, that was that was very um very frustrating and mm-hmm. and uh, that defensive the move bringing on Davis for for Winks that that's what cost us the match really to be honest he was at fault for two go- two goals me in the third one he was like ahead of chicken running back as well so couldn't agree more and I'm, I'm just sticking with Hill quickly do you think he should play against Rennes do you think he should play the full ninety as well. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, that's good. Like Ren is going to be a tough match. Is they were in the Champions League last year, I think. And, um, yeah, they've they've some uh, good technical players, and like this Conference League group that we actually have is is a difficult enough one. Like we've had easier Europa League uh, groups in the past, so yeah, we should be playing half decent. Uh, if if we do want to take it seriously, whether we do or not, I don't really care. But yeah, if they want to take the competition seriously, then we have to play the likes of Hill and. More and Borgwine if he's fit and the guys that maybe Emerson again get more in his legs and yeah it's kind of yeah yeah hundred percent Jack you any questions uh, unfortunately Joe I'm gonna have to take you back to you know maybe a bit of the to the Ben Davies maybe conversation you know Joe I know you're probably for a long time you know probably never rated the guy you know even given up on him a long time ago uh, but do you feel like maybe 
is this the worst that Ben Davies could possibly play, or do you feel like this could in some way be repeatable? Um, probably repeatable. Is this exactly, his worst but... version of himself? I guess is what I meant. Uh, no, because he could get worse. The older he, the older he gets, he could get worse, and the more, <laughs> the more pace he loses, and uh, Jesus, yeah, I, 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 God, I hate if they give you zero in two years time, and he's, I know, in his thirties, and Jesus, that that could be a. That could be back to like that was the Eunice Kabul days, and God, it could be rough now. Mm, definitely. And then, in in regards to maybe now taking you to the other conversation, but then this one's going to be asking a bit more of you. You know, Harry Winks, plenty have even said, even on this channel, including myself, he wasn't actually as horrible, you know, in that match, or maybe as bad as we anticipated. But do you feel like maybe yeah. in the case of Harry Winks, like? there just comes a state where there maybe isn't, it isn't a coincidence, right? That every time that these matches occur, these type of embarrassments or whatnot, he's in the squad. Or do you feel like also as well, like there was even no reason for him to even make this upcoming squad? Yeah. Like he, he, he wasn't like absolutely like the worst we've seen. We've seen worse wings performances in the past, yeah. like Everton and Everton and Paco Ferreira and, uh, but like the bar is so low with him, like if he does one or two good things, we're like, oh my god, <laughs> this is, he's, he's after playing, he's after playing a, a five yard pass. Like the bar is so low with him, and yeah, but yeah, we, like he wasn't like I thought. I thought Fewer Skip hospitals. And, yeah, yeah, I thought Skip and I thought Skip and Hyber were, were equally equally as bad in that game. Mm. But um, yeah. yeah, we got we got overrun in the midfield as usual with Wix in there. Right, J James McCarter uh, overran us like so. Mm. It's pretty, it's pretty, pretty embarrassing. But yeah, like with Winks, I, I don't know what we, what we do with him. Like, like, where, what games we play him in now? This stage, can we even trust him to play against like a Mickey Mouse team? I don't even, I don't no, even know. Can. We can't. He played Zagreb. He played uh, Pacos de Ferreira. He played Colchester. Antwerp. You know, some shocking defeats over the years. Antwerp. You just can't trust the guy any longer. Yeah, Brighton. Like Appreciate the bravery, Sean Joe. Than that answer. <laughs> yeah, Joe really was for he, he was brave. He was honest in his answer, Dave. Honestly, I expected him, you know, maybe to just shoot away, but he gave a very thoughtful, analytical answer there. He's very brave, David. No, it was it was. Yeah, um, he's so nice to me. That that must be an Irish saying because I say that the whole time, Joe. Big yourself up, lad. Yeah, Jimmy. Yeah, hundred percent. Jimmy with the super chat says it's repeatable because he does it every game long. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Yeah, it is. I couldn't agree more, Jiminy. What, what, what would you say to that, Jack? I mean, he, he just tore apart my question there, Jiminy. He absolutely tore apart my question. Great use well, of that yeah, word there, Bayern, Jiminy. Bayern Munich, Bayern Munich seven two. He was the midfield in uh, Bayern Munich seven two. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe take this super chat with me, Joe. Maybe what Jiminy means is Davies is the definition of repeatable. You know, like when I said, "Is this the worst Ben Davies we could see?" Jiminy is maybe clearly saying, "Listen, this Ben Davies that we just saw has been repeated over and over and over again." Maybe it's just I finally, possibly have you know just really seen this as maybe the worst version. But I guess what he's telling me is, you know, we've seen similarly worse versions in the past, and it always is repeatable. Yeah. No, hundred percent. Uh, look, Jiminy, you know you know my thoughts on Ben Davies. Uh, look, for me, look, the guy is just a disaster. Uh, I've been telling everyone he's slowing down. He constantly hiding in behind his uh, centre back. He doesn't want to do the defending. He's scared. Uh, he's just rattled every time he seems to play for Tottenham. And I'm done with him. I'm done with him and Harry Winks. Every time they play, same results keep happening. Now I'm just fed up with it. But big up, Jiminy. Big yourself up. What a legend. And uh, Dark Son G says catastrophe. Can't play centre back. Um, Antwerp and now Palace. Yeah, hundred percent. It's it's fully shown. Look, yeah. Mourinho tried him in the centre back partnership against Antwerp. We got bet, and uh, now Palace. Look, it's uh, look, it's the same thing. We keep talking about these guys every time when they were coming. Like you know, they're, they're they have a sniff getting in the team. People, are, oh yeah, look, all right, them off. Let's see what they can do. This, that, and the other. And then after the game, we're all sitting here going absolutely nuts. You know, ripping apart pillows, feathers everywhere. You know, everything. It's 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 absolutely ridiculous. We can't stick with these guys anymore. Big yourself up, Dark Sungji. Really appreciate the support. Jack's having a nice little chuckle there. <laughs> um, but, but look, Joe, what what lessons do you think us fans can take away from this Palace game? Uh, yeah, just uh, it's going to be an up and down season. Like as mm. Alex said, Alex Alex said on the show last week, it's going to be an up and down season. I completely agree with him. Yeah, we're gonna have we're gonna have some results like these when when our squad's depleted and we have injuries, we're gonna get we're gonna get beaten. But um, we will yeah. have some good we will we will have some good results. 
this season uh, uh, every now and again but the, the odd bad result will 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 occur every now and then mm. and then do you feel like maybe in that terms of you know those bad results that you're talking about joe do you feel like it's kind of maybe what you were saying or the lesson is is that there might be ones like this that just simply don't make sense and are even a bit inexcusable at times but it's just maybe what we have to roll with almost in a sense roll with kind of the punches to the stomach yeah because jack we have a we have a kind of even the squad is kind of, is, is still a bit uh what's the word thin still a, like we don't have that many options in some in some positions right. and some games are going to have to rely on on fringe players mm. who's uh who are whose confidence is low and yeah all that goes with that <laughs> so um yeah it, it will, we will have some uh there will be some up and up and down results, but um, yeah, I still, I still hope, hoping that we we'll make it scrape the top at six, but we'll see. Fingers mm. crossed. Ah, you never know, Joe. You never know. But look, um, your open conference league expectations. Look, we have Rens Thursday. What's your expectations for this? Um, it's gonna be a tough game. I think it's gonna be a tough game. Yeah. It's still, they have some good technical players and uh, Jeremy Doc, who is he still playing for them? Is he the Bel- the Belgian guy? Said, yeah, uh, I think he's supposed to be hurt for this one. So, a lot of said he's actually supposed Probably. to be injured. Oh, okay. That's, that's good. I, 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 I've yeah. only heard that from the Harris Army. I trust the Harris Army. I actually haven't, uh, you know, yeah. maybe a bit embarrassing. I haven't looked it up myself. I just trust them that much. I, I trust them as well. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be a tough game. They have some good players. And hopefully you can come out with a maybe like a 2-1 win or something. And I think there's fans back over there as well. So, yeah, they're going to be up for it. Hmm. 100%. 100%. Jack, any more questions for Joe? Uh, Joe, there will be one, just one more for you. And I just feel like, you know, maybe bring yourself, you know, t- towards maybe the Chelsea game, if you would, Joe. Do you feel like me, maybe Nuno might actually play a bit similarly that he did, you know, against Man City in the beginning of the season? Do you feel like maybe th- there might not be any differences? Do you feel like the formation might change considering Chelsea played three in the back? How do you maybe see that Chelsea game going? Uh, I think we have to go for it. Jack, to be honest, um, I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't think we we can sit back because they play against Palace and play three holding midfielders because Chelsea have the players just mm-hmm. pick us off and we could and um, yeah, like the top, like sports fans, like if we get bet having a go, like 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 fair enough, we got bet by the better team, but don't just lie down and like we did against Palace and just try to soak up the pressure because eventually we're going to concede because there's a there's a mistake in some of our players and. As we've seen before, so um, yeah. Hopefully, we just go for it and see and see what happens. Just, uh, hopefully, Sonny and Stevie B and a co- couple of guys come back into the team, and and maybe even Romero, or yeah. something like that. Just and uh, just just have a go already. And see see right. what happens. Hundred percent. Love that, Jim. And just look quickly before you go, Kane or Son? Ah, uh, both of them. Like <laughs> I, would, I would have said, I, I, I would have said Kane last season, but uh, Kane, he, like, gonna give him another few, few, uh, few weeks to see if he's, if he can regain his form. He looks a bit, maybe he's not fully fit or something, but he did look a bit disinterested the other day. So yeah, uh, yeah. No, hundred yeah. percent. Look, your splinters in your arse like me, lad, from sitting on the fence. But big yourself up, Joe. <laughs> good to see you on again, my man. It's good to have you yeah. on again. It's good to be back, yeah. And then um, I'm, go- I'm, go- I'm going to the Man United game at the end of October. So if I and the Harris Army are going to that, going to that match, uh, let me know and I'll have a few drinks and, uh, and I catch up. So yeah. the moon wow. boots, all we need is just a few moon boots calls. All we know is just even if moon boots is playing well, Joe, all we know is that we're, we're going to depend <laughs> on you. Just say, oh, great clearance, moon boots. Oh, that's a brilliant pass from moon boots there. Oh, just great development from moon boots. You know, that's all we'll need is just yeah. a bit of nicknames. Maybe even throw a Mr. Catastrophe in there for Dark Sun yeah. G or maybe a Mr. Easy Pass for Dark Sun G. Stinks. I know Dark Sun G is going to want a couple yeah. nicknames from you. Yeah, Stinksy as well. Yeah. He's going to want a couple <laughs> nicknames. So maybe a couple nicknames on behalf of the Harris Army for the Man United game. <laughs> yeah, I make make sure and do that. Get everyone around me say, saying all the names and then promote, promoting the channel as well. Big, Big yourself up, Joe. But look, guys, you know if anyone is going to the United game, you know put it in here on the chat. You know that you are going. You can meet up with Joe for a point or whatever. And if not, look, you know get in contact with me or whatever. I'll tweet out Joe's um Twitter page so you can get in contact with him directly then and uh, and make plans to meet up with him for a drink. Big yourself up, Joe. So night lads all the best legend bye bye bye
Well, look, we've four super chats to get to here, Jacko, and then mm. we'll get on the next guest. So the first one is by Jerome. Big up, Jerome. I hope things are well over there in Australia, my man. Says the lineup with Winks, Heiberg, and Skippy did that did not work at all. Why did we need three DMs as there was no creativity? Nuno played too safe against Palace. Look, you know, it's probably my thinking I, on, on hindsight that he probably used um, Skip and Winks to try and deal with um, Conor Gallagher. Um, you know, I mean, Phil, that's probably why he went with that. He tr- was probably thinking along the lines of me, you stop Conor Gallagher, you stop Palace. But look, it just didn't work for me. Not only did it not work in midfield, but it just didn't work with Delhi out on left. For me, you just put back in the tree you had in midfield, get them to keep turning the ball over like they have done, and put Brian Hill in there. You know what I mean? Or adopt, or adapt the formation to a 4-2-3-1. Put Brian out, Hill out left. Put Danny Alley farther up in the pitch centre. Do something like that. I was very disappointed. He didn't do anything. Even at half time, he could have changed it, and he didn't. Um, and look, I agree with you. It just does not work with them three in there. It does not work whatsoever. Um, look, mainly because any time the, the main player plays, Harry Winks, everyone else around him looks bad. And I, just, I keep saying it. I'm fed up with saying it. But uh, he makes everyone else around him look bad. Look, for me, you have to put in somewhere in there that's going to match Heiberg's and Skippy's, uh, you know, intensity and everything else, which Deli Ali is doing. Uh, it's, it's, he just got it completely wrong. Jack, what's your thoughts? Fantastic answer, David. I'm going to give you a bit of an applause there. Fantastic answer. I, I don't even know. I think you took everything I was going to say is, you know, maybe I would just say to Jerome, like I would just say to Jerome and also Jerome, big yourself up. It's good to see you again and really do appreciate your support whenever you do tune in, uh, yeah. Jerome. We really do appreciate you as well as they'll say it again. All the Aussies are absolute legends as well as the New Zealanders. Absolute legends down there. Uh, but maybe, yeah. I mean, there really is no excuse, I think, for the lineup that was selected. I think there is potentially, he was thinking maybe we might actually keep more possession with those kind of, you know, midfielders, but that obviously didn't work out and it did not promote any creativity. So there really is no excuse for it, Jerome. That's all I can say. And yes, he did play very safe against Palace. And hopefully all I can say is, Jerome, uh, maybe he learned from the lessons that maybe uh, David was just highlighting right there expertly. No, thank you, Jack. Oh, thank you, Jack. I appreciate that. Just quick uh, shout out to David, another member of the David Army. Big yourself up, my man, absolute legend. And um, Jerome again, Jack. Oh, he says I don't agree with uh, people saying Ali is stealing the living. He has worked hard. Uh, he worked hard in this game, but he is not a winger. Nuno got it all wrong. Look, I agree. I actually think yeah. Ali has turned it around the first three games of the season. Um, and look, he's not a winger. It's clear as day he's not a winger. Potts tried him out there one or two times as well. It didn't work. Uh, for me, look, the guy, he has to be involved in and around the middle. It's as simple as that. It's what sort of player he's in. It's what he's grown up to know as well. And I agree with you. Nuno got it all wrong. Another comment, 100% spot on here from uh, Jerome Jacko. Yeah, absolutely. And I would say to you, Jerome, it's like, yeah, I don't think he's stealing a living at all. In fact, Deli Ali has weirdly almost kind of replaced, you know, uh, at first he's now he's now fighting for the badge. He's showing what it means, you know, to put in a tackle. He's showing what it means to, you know, throw your body on the line for a block or, you know, uh, basically running up and down the field. I mean, I will say his distance covered every match is still quite impressive nowadays. And all I can say is, you know, weirdly, he's now started to fight for the badge, show a bit of heart, show a lot of passion. And now it's weirdly uh, his creativity and some of his techers and skills have kind of gone, you know, maybe a bit uh, have just gone kind of missing, you know, it, while he's replaced with that stamina. But all I can say, Jerome, is he's definitely not stealing a living because all we've said a million times is as long as they're fighting for the badge, as long as they're bleeding for the badge, showing what it means to fight for this club. You know, that's all that we can ask for them, no matter no matter how poor they're playing. You know, that's all we can ask for them. And I would say Deli Alley has definitely been doing that in the last few games. I still think he needs to improve that creativity in order to make the starting 11, I think, more often. Uh, but all I can say is he's definitely improved his attitude from the looks of it, and he's definitely improved his work rate and plenty of other things. 100%. Couldn't agree more. Expert on that answer there from uh, Jack Jerome. You really bought the best out of him there. And big up for the support, my man. Really do appreciate it. And hope you're enjoying uh, life over there in Osma, man. I hope, I hope you are. Uh, Brian C., uh, just before we address Brian C's uh, super chat, big up Brian C, by the way. I hope things are well. Um, guys, I did forget to mention the link if you do want to come on for any member that has a white, anyone that has a white or a gold membership, it is actually up in the community section on the channel. So just hit the community section. You'll see the link there. And then, you know, come on and have your say, guys. Um, but Brian C, he says, uh, lads, as bad as the Palace game was, could having such a disaster... Early on, me and Nuno will see the light early and abandon using Winks and Davies and play you and um, more creativity. Let's hope so. Look, Grace, um, look, this was actually my thoughts on it um, today when I was really thinking about it. 
But I want to say, first of all, I really liked um, your, your um, I think it was in the, um, the watch along, Brian C, the, the super chat. Was it Jack or was it? Yes, it was Brian C. It was Brian C. Yes, in the watch along. And it, where you were saying, you know, win or learn. And I absolutely love it. And we really did use that for the um, post match reaction. And I think we're going to do that for all the losses from now, from now on, unless they really are shambolic. But big up, Brian C. Really appreciate it. And look, I, I agree with you. I hope so. I hope now that he's earned, learned, uh, learned very early on in his Tottenham manager, managerial career, he cannot play Harry Winks or Ben Davies. He cannot do it. He cannot do it. Look, Harry Winks even played against Colchester and he was shit then as well. You know, if he can't play well against Colchester in pre-season, well, then I'm sorry. You know, that should have been more than enough. But look, he's given, he gave him a second bite of the cherry against Pacos de Ferreira. You know, then he said, look, I'll give you third time lucky playing him against Crystal Palace, and was equally as shit again. So, look, for me, you just can't play him anymore. Look, these players have ended up, when Pochettino had to rely on them, I've done a massive thing about it um, early on into my YouTube. Uh, YouTube and, um, you know, that when my, when Pochettino had to rely on Winks and Davies and that more regularly, it cost them the job. When Mourinho had to start using, um, you know, Winks and Davies through injuries and all, cost him his jobs, results were dipping and everything else. And now Nuno, you know, some of his first, uh, his two first losses, Pacos de Ferreira and Crystal Palace, both came with these guys in the team. Cannot be used anymore. It's as simple as that. I agree with you. I want to, and I've said this numerous of times. I've yep. saying it all last season. I would rather see the youths. I can accept mistakes from the youths. I cannot accept mistakes from these guys anymore. Jack, any, any, any thoughts there to Brian C.? No, Brian C., I would just say also really appreciate your support that you're giving both channels as well as our second channel on Flat Cap Bureau Talk. Really do appreciate you, Brian C., but absolutely, I do hope this has been the final straw maybe for for Winks and Davies, and maybe even Nuno has quickly learned that these are not the players like you were saying uh, to use. I kind of like that description, you know, now he's seen the light. I know Nuno being, a you know, seems like he's a man of philosophy. He seems to be a very educated man as well. He probably absolutely has already seen the light maybe from the last game. I really do hope he's learned from his lessons. Uh, Brian C. And I really like this optimism, you know, as much as we keep saying, you know, kind of, I would say in my opinion, kind of horrible things like, you know, Nuno out or Nuno disaster class and things like that. Mm -hmm. All I will say is Brian C. I really do hope that he has a bit of his thinking cap on. He has his learning cap on, like you even said before, and can just take this one, you know, take this one on the chest and just learn that he messed up, learn that he made a mistake and still maybe value, you know, the fact that he has a, a he has a way to learn from it and he has a way to, you know, maybe, yeah, in a way, prove those mistakes wrong. And it just seems like, you know, we are maybe jumping the gun here a bit on maybe uh, what has happened on on the weekend. And I would say even going back to what Joe said, you know, sometimes we have to be ready for these kind of, you know, punches in the stomach that, you know, defeats that just don't make sense uh, and, and things like that. And of course, that sounds a bit vague, but I would say a lot of us were not expecting a lot from the season. The way we started with Nuno, I would already say I'm plenty satisfied. Of course, Saturday was absolutely awful. It's not how I anticipated it to go. But I will say maybe this is the, you know, the light that Nuno needs, possibly, you know, getting that manager of the month award. You know, maybe I don't uh, think it got to his head or anything, but maybe the timing couldn't be more perfect, Brian C. The timing couldn't be more perfect. 100%. Big up, Jack. And big up, Brian C. So really appreciate the support, my man. Really valued as well. Big yourself up. Uh, Paul Markey says, just seen a report and a wonder end on Belly wanted to move when Wally Winks has played before him. Makes sense to me. Um, yeah, look, I'll be honest with you. If I was end on Bella, I'd be fuming. I would be absolutely fuming. But at the same time, he's another one that's had chance after chance and hasn't took it. Look, mm. you can say, yes, okay, last season he was better than Harry Winks and everything else. But there's, there has to be something there that all these managers don't want initially want him in their team. There has to be something there. Four managers now, same results, initially haven't wanted him in the team. Now, it might come a cause where they have to give him a chance and he might take it. Okay. But there has to be something there. But look, with Endon Belly, he's all the ability, but I don't know what's wrong. But yeah, if I had his ability, I'd be pissed off that Winks was playing ahead of me. But I'd also be questioning why. And I'd be questioning myself why, not just the managers. But Jack, what's your thoughts on Paul Markey? We have a load of super chats to get through here. This is going to be surprising, actually, for me. Just because I am the you know the world's biggest Atangi apologist, and people have put this before, you know, I will maybe pass out maybe the Tongi apologist memberships to anybody in the Harris Army who wants to join me, and you know we can be in our little cave of you know delusionalism, you know about Tongi, uh, and uh, we'd be happy over there, you know, nice and warm, you know, just talking about you know going over Tongi highlight reels and all that stuff. Uh, but do let me know if anybody wants to join that club. Uh, <laughs> what I can say to you, Paul Markey, though, is I'm about to be quite harsh on him, and this is going to be surprising. 
I made this excuse for him in the case of, you know, the Ryan Mason debate. You know, he Ryan Mason immediately took Tongi out of the side uh, and replaced him with players that I thought absolutely had no chance over him and didn't deserve it over him last season. We do have to, I got actually, I wouldn't say I got shut down for it. I just think I got quite, you know, I had a lesson taught me. I got quite humbled, but I think <laughs> everybody's saying that that was being too nice to Tongi, you know, to, to have somebody on that much money, you know, be that much affected by something like that is quite ridiculous. Uh, he is a, he is an adult. He's a professional at the end of the day. He has to be able to realize that, listen, there are players that will be picked ahead of you, especially with your attitude uh, considering. So Paul Markey, all I can say is this is just another lesson for Tongi, and I'm not going to be kind to him. I'm not going to be kind to him. I think it's just more lessons to him. Like you can be as good as you want, but if your attitude stinks in the way that it does, you're not going to be selected. And there are going to be plenty of managers that are going to continue to do that to him. 100%. 100%. Couldn't agree more. Big up, Paul Mark. You really appreciate the support. And look, Jack, we'll take this one from William Kelly, and then we do have a lot more to get through. So I think we might bring on Ellie to help us get through them. Um, William Kelly, big up first of all. Really, really appreciate the support, my man. You're way, way too nice, way, way too kind, my man. Really appreciate it. Since I've been supporting Spurs for 25, 30 years, the pot here gave me the lift I needed. But even then, we couldn't get over the line due to lack of funding. But that performance against Palace really scared me, and my patience mm. is nearly gone. Well, look, William Kelly, what I'll say to you is, Look, you know, if you've already done 25, 30 years, I'm sure you can do another 25, 25, 30. You know, that's the way I'd be looking at it. Look, I get you. Palace won't cut deep. It hurts. It really does. Uh, look, I can't deny it. I was gutted. I was gutted Saturday. I was gutted yesterday. You know, my ma, you know, tried to hand me some birthday cake and I was just looking at it and there were strawberries in it and they were red and I was like, it reminds me of Palace. I don't want it, you know. Um, but then today, look, I've tried to turn over a new leaf. It still hurts, but look, we just have to, for me, I I, I think it's a new week. Let's get behind them for Rennes. Let's get behind them for Chelsea. North London Derby coming around the corner as well. Let's see what we can do. And look, maybe at the North London Derby after a few successful results, your, your, your fate might be back in them. But I agree with your pots for me. Have to say, in my lifetime was probably my favorite era with Harry Harry Redknapp's era second, I would say. Um, but big yourself up, um, William Kelly. I really appreciate that. And yeah, look, Poch was let down by a lack of funding, hundred percent. I couldn't agree more. And um, yeah, that that's where I'm at. But big yourself up, William Kelly. Anything you want to say, Jack? Or to William Kelly, and then we'll get Ellie on. Yeah, I got lots to say to William Kelly. Uh, first, I would say is William Kelly. Unfortunately, I still have plenty more tanks of that patience, you know, left. You know, probably just multiple, multiple <laughs> gallons of patience. I would say, you know, I'm still, I'm still quite young. Even I was kind of, you know, a fan towards the very, very end of the Harry Redknapp era, and then I moved on to Villas Boas and Poch, and uh, it's, you know, I've, in a way, I've been actually quite privileged, you might say, in terms of my. Uh, Spurs experience compared to yours as well, David, you know, William Kelly, you know, he also had to make the trip down under as well, you know, and still be a Spurs fan where he's had to watch it at, at ungodly hours, you know, maybe even after an all night bender still has to wake up, you know, and watch his Spurs and be disappointed. So I feel like William Kelly has definitely had plenty of punches in the gut, plenty of stabs in the back uh, from this team, from Levy, from the players, wherever it may be. So William Kelly, I do maybe understand where maybe those ounces of patience are definitely running out. But all I can say, William Kelly, is we're Spurs fans. I mean, we're practically the best in the business that it comes to taking a punch. Uh, you know, there's no better no better fans at it than us. So all I know is William Kelly. I know there's still a few tanks of patience left in there. And hopefully you can maybe use the Irish Hotspurs. Maybe you're... I don't know, source of positivity or optimism, therapy. maybe just to fill that. Yeah, that therapy, just to fill up those tanks of patience. Maybe use us as your, as your patient's gas station, maybe more or less. Uh, that, but William Kelly, as always, I really do appreciate you. And you're honestly an absolute legend to us. And David, all I can say to him, you have to recognize, right? You had to make that trip from Ireland to the down under and have to watch it in these ungodly hours. So I would say that would also get to me, David. That would yeah. absolutely get to me. And William yeah. Kelly, as always, you're an absolute legend. Really do appreciate you. Big up, William Kelly. What an absolute legend, my man. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate the support. You're too kind to us, my man. Dark Sun G says, I hope catastrophe and easy pass get left in France. Yeah, look, hopefully they missed the boat home or something, or maybe we can find a little low move to some lower league team in France. Dark Sun G, I couldn't agree more. Uh, he got man. me there. He got me there, Dark Sun G. God, everyone's yeah. making me crack. Maybe I just have the funny bone on today, but really, David, they're getting me today. They're getting me today. No, they really are. Brilliant. Dark Sun G also says, use Utes for Reds and Blues, no catastrophe or easy pass. I couldn't agree more, my man. Look, for me, I don't want to see any more of them. I think they will play. I think we're going to have to put up with it, Mr. Um, Mr. Dark Sun G. But, um, uh, yeah, no, I don't want to see them anymore, but I do think we'll have to just suck it up. 
Um, I bet he concludes that. It seems like Dark Sun G probably writes that after everything. No catastrophe or easy pass. You know, he might even do, he probably puts that at the end of a paper, you know, even when he writes a receipt, David, for something, you know, <laughs> he just puts no catastrophe or easy pass. He just always likes to say youths and remember no catastrophe or easy pass. Can't even be near there because I think Dark Sun G as a manager of the youth academy probably just thinks they're poisoning, you know, his youth as well, David. No, definitely 100%. Big up, Dark Sun G. Really, really appreciate the support. Look, the Super Chats are still flying in, Jack. So, look, we're going to get Ellie on to help us uh, get through some of these. Mm. So, look, let's get her on. An absolute channel legend. Has a good show coming up with Philip that I can't wait to yeah. get out and for everyone to watch. Look, let's bring her on. Ellie, how are things? Brilliant. I was just waiting patiently because I was thinking I've got to go undercover because we lost the palace. Come on. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not showing my eyes because they're crying. <laughs> no, no, stop. It, that, that one hurt. That one hurt. Oh, it, hurt so it, bad. it was. It was. Um, look, Ellie, I'll get uh, I'll get your thoughts on the Palace game in just one minute. Just we get okay. through a couple of these super chats with you. Okay. And we we'll get your thoughts no on the Palace game. Jiminy puts in, he says the common denominator in this team isn't the manager, it's the Deadwood players. We can't bring in new managers and keep the same business players and expect a different result. Whoa. It's total madness. Look, Jiminy, I, I fully agree. I've said this before. If we keep Sing doing it from this, the Bible, yeah, hundred percent. I've said this before. If we keep doing this, we're going down the same route as Arsenal, but just at a quicker rate. And I, I, I truly do believe that. That's why I do think we have to just start back and back an A manager, the one that they do want to back, find someone and back them. Look for me. I think they need to back Nuno now that he's here. But we can't keep going down this route, Jiminy. I fully agree. But Ellie, what's your thoughts on what Jiminy's saying here? Very good comment. Um. I agree to some extent, yeah, but there's there's pragmatic pragmatic Nuno. He played eight mm. defensive players. What more do you want to get out of the match? We're either going to draw or lose. We're not going to win it because there's no creativity. See, mm. managers have got to think, right, who are my best players to get me a result, right? Winks is not the best player to get you a result. It's proven. How many mm. games have we lost with him, like you said, yeah. David? So yeah. why play him? It must be because he's been chewing the manager's ear to give him a chance so that he can get back into yeah. the England squad, which is very unlikely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> very unlikely. He, the thing is, we keep on playing him, and I can't fathom why, because he doesn't offer us anything, right? Then Northern Belly, who's talented, even if he gives you 60 minutes, that's more than... Wait, we could be playing until next year and he won't give you anything more. You know what I mean? He's not going yeah. to create. So it's about players, player management, and players who you play on the day to beat a team. Yeah. And Vieira got it right and Nuno got it wrong. So I'm blaming the manager for picking yeah. those players and also the substitutions. They were judges. Roden, yeah. yes, I agree with to some extent. But we could have put more attacking. We had uh, Malkandi and we had Scarlett on the bench. Yeah. They're, they're itching to play their Spurs boys. Brian Hill, Ellie. Brian Hill. Brian yeah, Hill. Right. yeah I, I haven't forgotten Brian Hill, but I'm saying to <laughs> score you a goal, to score you a goal, you have to put on Scarlett because Kane was out of sorts, wasn't he? He was yeah. right off the pace and he looked tired. Yeah, so he wasn't giving you anything. The only one who was giving us something is Mora, because he was yeah. killing himself to try and create something, and he was driving us forward. But the rest of the team, apart from maybe Royal was Emerson Royal played pretty good. I thought he got a lot of stick, but I thought he battled really hard with Saha, who's a very skillful player. Don't yeah. get me wrong, he he can take on any players, but he had a really particularly good game against us. And he wound up Tanganga to the point that he, he got sent off. So he lost his discipline yeah. there a bit, yeah. Tanganga. They showed his age a bit. He should yeah. have just backed off and walked away. Yeah, but yeah. he got into a brawl, didn't he? So he got sent Definitely. off. Yeah. yeah. Uh, look, I actually, I actually do want to talk to you on that. Just uh, uh, one second, Jack. What would you say to Jiminy? What I would say to Jiminy is like, to be honest, David, I feel like he's singing from the Bible here. He's singing the chorus, David, of the Harris Army, not even the Harris Army, just you, David. I mean, I think you've said this a million, million times. And I love that Jiminy seems to be just singing from the from the hymn sheet here on it, where he, to be honest, as much as, you know, the abysmal 
players or sorry, excuse me, as much as, you know, maybe the tactics, the managers have let us down in multiple games. I will say there've been multiple games in Spurs past where obviously you can point to the manager, but there's some, there's certain common denominator also always there, which are certain players that have always been present under plenty of managers during these catastrophic or even yeah. dismal uh, defeats. And that's what I would say. So really there's a common denominator and it's not the manager. It really is these players. And yeah. to be honest, we knew that we couldn't get all of these Deadwood out in one season. Serge Aurier and Musa Sissoko, maybe in terms of maybe the squad or, you know, the the morale might have been better to move mm-hmm. on, you might say. I, I don't know if I can agree with that, but so I've been told that was the case. Uh, I would have obviously, and like everyone else, would have preferred to probably move on Davies and, and Winks first, uh, yeah. but maybe that were a lot harder. And it's understandable that maybe those players were a lot harder to move on simply because I would probably say there weren't a lot maybe interested in those two as well. So yeah. you really were going to have to, you know, have to really sell yourself in order to get those guys out of the club. I doubt Levy really wanted to do that, especially because since one of them is a homegrown, you know, and it's very hard to replace the homegrown. Uh, Jiminy, all I can say is you're absolutely singing from the Harris Army uh, hymn sheet. You're singing from the choir, and David probably absolutely worships you for this. Yeah. I will say, you, I mean, honestly, Jiminy, you're dropping the mic here. Nah, big up, yeah, drop mic, drop moment, Jiminy. You had one the other day as so well. You can now walk out the door and come back in a few minutes later. What a moment that is, my man. Great comments, and I really appreciate it, my man. Big yourself up. You're an absolute legend. And uh, Jerome Ellie, he was um, a bit a bit like what you were saying. You know, I never liked Vieira as a player, but now to hear him say with arrogance it was not special to beat Spurs, that really made me angry, and I want us to strike Palace at home. So Nuno, Nuno better step up. I know this is a comment that you would already like to respond to, Ellie. Yeah, because Vieira got it spot on. You can't argue with him. He brought on attacking flair players who were going to get him a goal. And Saha, yeah. was, Saha, as soon as he saw Tanganga got sent off, he was like on heat. He just went for the juggler. And then you've got um, the other guy with the nice hair. I've forgotten his <laughs> name. Idiot. <laughs> I think I'll call him. <laughs> Surfer um, Gallagher. Yeah, that's it. I keep on, you know what? When they're not supposed to. He looked like a wannabe Californian. That's all I can say about Gallagher. And I'm not from California, but he looked like a wannabe surfer. You know, it looked like he he was on the cast of, you know, anybody from the US would know what I mean. He looks like he was on the cast of the OC or, you know, even the Hills, you know, with uh, Blake Lively and, you know, actors like that. So that's all I can say. He looked like a wannabe (laughs) Californian. I've got my glasses off now. Right. I've had enough. (laughs) Right. So basically. That guy, he he done some awful shots, but he was terrorising us because yeah. he, when he got the ball, we didn't know how to handle him. Ollie, Ollie Skip had a bad one, and yeah. unusual unusual for him. Hoy Bier was in and out of the game, but he didn't really affect it that much. Like I said, only Lucas Mora was giving us anything. But Patrick yeah. Vieira, he must have been laughing under his skin when he saw Davison come on. Davis. Come on. Yeah. That's why I'm saying Nuno must take some of the blame because the players yeah. have to go on the pitch and affect the game. But these yeah. players have not affected the game for years. Yeah. They've been letting us down for years. All right. Yeah. So I agree with Jiminy up to a point, right? And I, I believe, yeah, you guys are spot on. You do you have to agree with him. But it's also yeah. Nuno's fault for putting them in. Yeah. Why why pick them in the first place? Yeah, mm. he's got other youngsters that he can blood because yeah. those youngsters would want to play for the badge and they'll give their all and they'll actually affect the game. And yeah. we could have come out with three points. You don't yeah. know. If he yeah. changed it about a bit and put on Scarlet, he might have even got a goal and then the game changes when you get a goal, doesn't it, lads? Yeah. You know, yeah. if we'd gone if we'd gone one nil up, we'd we would have had the momentum and then I know Palace tend to buckle when they go one nil down or two nil down, they do. They haven't yeah. got the experience or the, yeah. or the, they, they're not as good as us, but the, we had the weakened side anyway. So they beat our, they beat our second team really, didn't they? Apart from, oh, all right, we did have some first teamers, but most of them were our second team. Mm. You know, it's just a lot of changes. It's a, a lot of changes. It's a mi- mismatch of players, wasn't it? Yeah, too, it was. too too many defenders. That's what I thought. Too many defensive players. Yeah. I, there was eight and only three attacking players. That's a yeah, new balance. Hundred percent for me. It looked like he was going for the point. Uh, just quickly, yes. Ellie. Um, just just I uh, just quickly I just want to respond to Jerome. Um, yeah. look, I'll be honest with you. I actually uh, look. I grew up watching Vieira and Keen battles. I used to enjoy them. And <laughs> um, look, I don't like him because he is an ex-schooner. 
uh, you know, so that, that that definitely puts him on the hit list. Um, and then with the arrogance after the game, yeah, you know, it's, it was nothing special to beat Tottenham. Yeah, look, with this guy, look, Palace were always on my list. I think most of the Premier League are on my list at the minute. But now this one goes high up on the priority already this season to get them in the return leg. And it really made me angry as well. I want to destroy them just like you, my man. Big yourself up, Jerome. And I really, really do appreciate the super chat. Really big yourself uh, up, Jerome. Dark Sun G says, hey, guys, any youths for centre-back you want to see? For me, I'm going to say for Scott C. Jack. Uh, you took it out of my mouth, David, but I'm going to say Cissé, that beautiful six foot seven center back slash, you know, inverted left back yeah. winger that we had that one game. Honestly, yeah. David, he was glorious. Yeah. He even got into that scuffle, I think, with the Leighton Orient player yeah. as well. Really do love Cissé. Honestly, he was an absolute class lad. I would say love to see him. Ellie, any for you? Um, what player to come in? Uh, you, you center back. It's uh, just Dark Sun G here at the Super Chat. It says, hey, guys, any youths for center back uh, you want to see? Pastorius, is it? Pastorius? Oh, Scotty. 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 Oh, I think he's Anyway, yeah. definitely. That's and crazy. he's the one who murdered his wife, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I shouldn't no, laugh. Scotty. That's bad. No, he did murder. Oh, 100%. But, yeah, he'd be good because he's very physical. Yeah. yeah. He, he had he, a good piece. He, he, right he plays right back, but I think he can play centre-back because he's got the attributes to be a centre-back because he's strong. Yeah. 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 I like him against Lake Norwich. Brilliant. Hundred mm. percent. Mm. I'll have to get his name right one day. <laughs> yeah. Call him the Estonian. Call him the Estonian. That's no, all you have name, to do. He's no, our Estonian. Nobody pronounces my name right, so. Yeah, we'll just call him the Estonian. Maybe the the Estonian, Estonian. assassin. You know, maybe yeah. whatever it is. I know Dark Sun G will find a nickname for him one day. Uh, but Dark Sun G, maybe it actually instead of a negative one, it'll be a positive one. You know, in this case. Yeah. Uh, but I would say, yeah, I'm gonna call him the Estonian. You know, in cases when people don't remember the name. Hundred yeah, uh, percent. Timan Timan Double Seven says, I think Davies is poor and don't like him in the team. But <laughs> Winks is one I just can't get my head around. Offers absolutely nothing. Yeah, look, I agree. But Ellie, yeah. what's your thoughts on Davies and Winks in the team? Give your thoughts here. Today, man. <laughs> Do you know what? I want to cry. Every time they're picked, I actually want to cry. I sit there yeah. watching it, and it's just the same old, same old rubbish that they produce. Yep. They don't They don't offer us anything. Davies, he goes forward, and then he checks back and passes back. Winks, he doesn't receive the ball on the half turn ever. If he does, yeah. it's a miracle. So that he mm. doesn't drive us forward. All he does is pass backwards and sideways. What? Oh, well, it doesn't offer you anything, does it? It's just so annoying. And I, I feel like sick inside every time I see them in the team. I don't, I, I want to support them because they're Spurs boys. Yeah. But they just, I just can't bring myself to accept them as Spurs players because they're not, they're not Spurs players. We, we have <laughs> exciting players. Janola and Modric and Gaza and um, Hoddle and Perryman. You know, there's so many players that play for our club that are absolutely fabulous. Yeah. Got Berbatov and Keane up front, our dealers, Ricky Villa. You know, these players, they couldn't even lace their boots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, How come they, you be allowed have... near their boots, Ali? I would say no. not even allowed near their boots, even. Modric, you know, these. I, I, I get angry when they're played because they're not our standard. And if yeah. we play them, we're not going to get our standard. We're always going to be in the doldrums, like last yeah. season, when we lost so many games and they were in yeah. the team. Look, and he played, when we played the Champions League final, he puts winks in. Yeah. Potofino, he shot himself in the foot. He did. Come on. Yeah. 100%. You're right. 100%. Oh. As soon as I saw him in the team, I thought, oh, my God. Is it, We're it, like doesn't that every feel, it doesn't fill you with optimism, does it? Never no. does. Never does. No. Um, but look, Jack, you give your uh, quick thoughts here to Tim Man 007. And then um, I want to ask um, Ellie a bit more about the Palace game. Tin Man, I know that Winks is, you know, is someone that we cannot get our head around. I agree with you. I really don't understand him. I feel like he's so specific to a certain kind of role in a team 
that you have to cater so much to him that it doesn't make sense considering his quality is well below the rest of the players in the squad. So why on earth would you need to cater to his really specific position and role in a squad? I think he likens himself, Winks, to be kind of like a Jorginho. But of course, he's nowhere near the ability or passing or intelligence or just creative ability of a Jorginho. And even mm-hmm. what I would say to that as well, Chelsea fans still rip on Jorginho all the time and say how many limitations he has, how much sometimes he can hurt the squad despite how brilliant he can be. So that just shows like even, you know, the best version of Winks, which I think is Jorginho, still has his limitations. So it just shows that I do think Winks is by no means anywhere close to, you know, a Tottenham Hotspur level, maybe like Ellie was just saying, uh, Tin Man. And then in Davies' case, I don't know that I used to think uh, when I used to think Davies was maybe just a tad, you know, a bit more tolerable than maybe uh, than Winks. But now I would say they're practically on the same level for me because that was so catastrophic. And just like how uh, Dark Sun G says he is. I mean, Mr. Anonymous is just way too kind to him, just so kind to him. I don't even know how to say it. Like Mr. Catastrophe is even now starting to become a bit kind as well. So that's what I would say. They're actually on equal level with me. They're on par with me now, I'd say, in terms of, you know, uh, how much I'd like to see them go. Well, Tim, man, I, ho- I hope you enjoyed Ellie Zanjak's answer to your super chat there, my, there, my man. Big yourself up for support. I really appreciate it, my man. Really, really do appreciate it. I'll just take this one from them, William Kelly and uh, another one from Dark Sung G, and then we'll get on to more questions for Ellie. Uh, William Kelly says, I'm really worried about Nuno. Won't learn from his mistakes, guys. He will continue to play weeks. William Kelly, look, I, I just hope he realises he's had two losses already. I'm both of them were with Winks in. And Dave is involved in some way. So, look, I agree. I hope he... Uh, look, will he learn from his mistakes? I don't know. I think... I, I don't know. I really I really do hope he does. Look, he... Me and Jack, when we did do a big thing on Nuno when he first came, um, you know, we, we he does like the youth. So, maybe, hopefully, he's just sussing out and he's kind of really learned his lesson now that, you know, that he can't trust these guys and that he will go with you from now on, William. But big, my big yourself up, my man. I hope things are well. And I'm sorry you had to get up at an awkward hour yeah. to watch that game. You know, yeah. it's, it's it's not good. But big up, William Kelly. Really appreciate it. And Dark Song G says, please use White, Divine, and John um, from now on, especially Divine. Yeah, look, Divine, he scored two against Liverpool on the 23s. Look, he's a hot prospect. He was very uh, highly rated at Wigan. I'm surprised we got him when we did um, because uh, a lot of clubs were sniffing around this guy. So I'm absolutely delighted to get him. Recently, he signed a new contract as well. I'm a big fan of Harvey White as well, Dark Sunji. Free kick specialist, can play left back and centre midfield as well. And Niall John, look, Mourinho had him on the bench for a Europa League last season. Nuno's had him in around the first team this season. So they clearly see something in him. So look, um, big yourself up, Dark Sunji. And I hope to see all of these, my man. Big yourself up. But Jack, do you want to fire a question at Ellie here? I was just going to make sure before I do, David, uh, that one after this Dark Sun G one is a Jerome as the next super chat before, because everybody will digress and say we need to ask Ali some questions here. We really do appreciate all the yeah. support that we've been given so far. But, you know, uh, we're, we're just trying to keep up sometimes with these super chats. So, David, just want to make sure. So I stay my my screen is correct. Is it Jerome that's after Dark Sun G? So when we catch up? Mine's after that- going. Mine's after going. I, I'm down to where Jiminy is. So I think you're going to have to just call them out, Jack, or bring them up yourself. Okay, I, I will. I'm just making sure that we just don't miss any. Let us know if we do miss any after this, everybody. But I'm going to stay at the very, very top so I don't lose any of them. Uh, but Ellie, you know, maybe yeah. in terms of the Crystal Palace match, you know, is there any lessons, you know, that maybe you feel like maybe Nuno learned, you learned about the squad? Is there anything in particular, actually, maybe about certain players, you might say, that just can't play in those positions again? You know, what did you feel like you maybe learned from this match? I think he's he's got to learn that he's got to play not on belly because we need creative players. You might say that just can't play in those. Yeah. Right. So he's basically not on belly. Right. He's our most creative player. We need him. We need him because if we don't have him, what are we going to do? We're going to do the same old things. If he plays Winks and Davis, it's going to be mm. the same results. We're not yeah. going to get the. We're not going to get the good results, especially because we were pl- only playing Crystal Palace. Imagine yeah. if we were playing Liverpool or Man City. All right, we beat Man City, but we had a weakened, they had a weakened side and we played particularly well in that game and there was no winks. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, so I think he needs more creativity and we need to play Dane Scarlett as well because if someone's going to be injured for two or three weeks, which I, I've heard that he will be, 
right? We're not 100% sure because it's hearsay. Plus, Sonny, he always comes back early, doesn't he? Right? Yeah. So, even if he's out for one week, give Dane Scarlett a chance, for God's sake. The boy is crying out for first-team football. Yeah. And he, he's got the attributes. He's got pace. He's hard-working. He will run forever. Against that Paco de Ferreira, they didn't provide him. Yeah. All, you know, because Weeks was playing in that game as well, and there was no creativity. Brian yeah. Hill was trying. He was really yeah. trying to get the ball to him. But Paco de Ferreira defended very well in that game. Yeah. The second game at White Lane, which I went to, that's proof, boys. Yeah. <clears throat> you saw you saw it on Instagram anyway or whatever, wherever you watch. Right. So I was watching it very carefully and Winks played in that game, but all he was doing was just holding the ball and passing it sideways, holding the ball, passing it sideways, or passing it backwards. And it was only Brian Hill who was giving us a bit, and that's why Harry Kane got his goals. Mm. Right? But it's crying out for Nodon Belly to come back now. It's his time to come back. We've is it that sense of risk, Ellie? Is that what it is? I mean, I know we keep saying the same things with Winks, you know, because he always wants to make, we say, sideways passes, backward passes, Mr. Safe Man, Mr. Easy Passes, yeah. as Dark Sun yeah. G says. But do you feel like what it actually is is that he doesn't actually take any risks? He doesn't want to make a pass that, you know, might actually break the lines, you know, a pass that, yeah. you know, let's say it's intercepted, but at least he's going for something there. Is that what you think it is? He needs, he needs me to coach him. That's what he needs. <laughs> I'm a fantastic coach, by the way. I would get him, and I would. I'm, I'm a very good coach. You would show what it, you show him what it means to drop the shoulder. Yes, out. drop your shoulder, turn, and go forward for God's sake, because he's got it. You can well, do it. You, you see him against Man City. That that run he done against Man City. He just went for the juggler, and he got fouled by Sinchenko. Hmm. I've said it before on here. He's got it in his locker to do it. He's just frightened. I think maybe he's lost confidence. I don't know, but you know, he, he, I've not seen it since then. He's just yeah. playing easy passes, like you said, right? And yeah. he's just, he's scared, and he's scared to make a tackle as well. He always backs off, and he doesn't get stuck in. So he's a, he's a, it's a very annoying because you want him to do, you want him to do well. He's a Spurs yeah. boy. He came through yeah. our academy. But he's, I don't, he's just I don't, never going to. He's I don't never going think to. He's not going to make the grade. He's not going to no. make the grade. And he's, he, he mm. shot himself in the foot because he knows that he's got it in his locker to get forward. Yeah. But he's, yeah. he's shown it. He's actually only shown it two or three times, really. Because in the Champions League final, he was rubbish. Yeah. And he, st he stunted all our attacks. In the League Cup final, oh my God, that was even worse. Yeah, I was watching him closely because I thought, "Come on, Winks, do something." Because you you want him to do well because he's a no, not anymore. Not you anymore. really do. But on her hand on heart, though, David, you because he's a Spurs academy boy and he's a Spurs boy, you'd want him to do well. But now you've come to the end of your tether. No, yeah, well, I, I wanted him to end of my tether ages ago, but I wanted him to do well, you, David. Yeah, I you wanted do. Him to do well, but and now I'm just I'm done. I don't know how many more chances we need to give the guy. Yeah. I'm done. No That's more. It. I'm just fed up with him. The end of the Moving on from uh, um, Harry Winks, Ali. A bit about yeah. Brian Hill. What do you make of Nuno's decision not to use him at all? And do you think oh. this guy could be the one to, to solve our creative crisis? Because I really do believe that. Yeah, I believe that as well. You imagine him and Nodombelli. They'd link up so well. Because Nodombelli appreciates players that actually get forward. He mm. hates players who pass back. When, when he receives the ball, not the belly, the only thing he can think of is getting forward. He's on the mm. half turn straight away. And he's so big and robust, no one can get near him. He's like Dembele when Dembele mm. was at his peak. But the thing yeah. is, he hasn't, he hasn't got all the fitness. But yeah. like I said, 60 minutes of not on belly is five years of Harry Winks. If, you know, yeah. He wouldn't well, even get You know what well, I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's just silly to play Winks when you've got a talented boy like Northern Billy and he's warming the bench. What did he yeah. cost us? 60 million euro? Yeah. He, he, and he's getting 200 odd thousand pounds a week and he's warming our bench. What yeah. is wrong with them, Dan? Come on. Play yeah. the boy. Play him. 
If he doesn't play well, get him off and put on break hill. Or play them both together at least. You know? Because yeah. they're... I mean, Brian Hill is a different player. He's a lot more like a Gareth Bell, isn't he? He's on the wing. Yeah. yeah. And like a Johan Cruyffy player, Modric player. But yeah. Lord Don Belly is the type of player that you need in midfield because he's robust, tough. He's a bit like Gaza, isn't he? Tough. And he yeah. goes forward. Yeah. Why wouldn't you play a player that plays like Gaza? Come on. Come on, Sp- <laughs> Come on, Nuno. He's a, a plea to you. Please play him. Yeah. Ellie, do you feel like taking yourself back to the Crystal Palace game again? Do you feel like I know like we really did not play, you know, particularly well. Uh, but do you feel like is there anything in particular that you feel like maybe hurt us the most in our chances of winning? Was it that Jaff at red card, Dyer's injury, maybe the three CDMs, Ben Davies? You know? <laughs> it's a combination of all of them. Dyer going off. I don't know. They, it's like domino you, effect. You, yeah. you know, yeah. you can't you can't argue because he Roden come on and he played brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. I loved I loved the way Roden played. He was a shining light, wasn't he? Him and Mora were the only two. Mm. Hoybier, I thought he was a bit out of sorts. He didn't really get into the match. He didn't yeah. orchestrate the midfield like he usually does. Um and he didn't really get back a lot so much he, he was relying on emerson royal to do that i thought yeah. he had a pretty good game in on the most he lost his discipline a couple of times but yeah tanganga going off i think that was the turning point for crystal palace because they got the b in their body didn't they even yeah. before then they were getting above they were getting confidence because they saw that we were buckling yeah and we had nothing going forward and Kane was out of sorts. There's, there's a lot of factors that led to the defeat. A lot of factors. You can't pinpoint one. Yeah, 100%. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. But look, Ellie, we do have to crack on. I really appreciate you coming on. Yeah. Some absolutely great, great, fantastic answers once again. And look, Thank I really you. appreciate you coming on. But before we let you go, do you want to just yeah. quickly tell everyone about your show that's coming up? Yeah, it's um I don't know what your the title's going to be because we're not. No, but just tell them what's about. Just tell them yeah. what. Tell them yeah, to. basically it's about. What will you be skills. teaching us, Ellie? What will you be teaching ah, us? Right, I'll be teaching you lots about the nineteen fifties team, the nineteen sixties team, um, about particular players that I loved before even Glenn Hoddle came about, um, yeah. and just about Spurs' history and nostalgia. And giving the young fans a, a, an insight into how I felt at the time when I was right. growing up, you know, and how yeah. I love Spurs, what, how, how I watched Spurs and how I saw all the players and which players I liked. And then Phil's going to come on and give us even more insight back, way back. Yeah. So yeah. it's going to be a fantastic show and I hope everybody tunes in because you're going to get really a good history lesson of Spurs. Plus, you're going to have a bit of banter. And me and Phil, we're, you know, we know our stuff. We know our yeah. stuff. But anything we get wrong, you know, because we're all human, right? We might get a few things wrong here and there, but we'll put them right. If they chat to us and they say, oh, you got that one wrong, we'll say, yeah, OK, we'll hold our hands up. You no, there'll be no and, around. I don't think you're getting right? anything wrong, no. Ellie. No, I, I don't think so. I, I, I just wanted to show you this for Marcello. I bought some Brazilian shorts today. See? Oh, I love it. Yeah. Love it. And, those look uh, actually, yeah. I would love to wear those as well, actually, yeah. Ellie. I must admit, like, I would like those. They're, yeah, they're like swimming trunk ones. They're yeah. not um, football ones, but I bought the swimming trunk ones so I can wear them for swimming as well. But yeah, yeah they're really nice. And oh, I like them. For, for Shamu. Them off. <laughs> <laughs> I love for the gala party for the gala party and then ellie yeah. i would say i think it may be in including in your spurs stories for everybody you have to probably include some of those vantages that you had for some of the games you know maybe sitting on yeah. the top of a truck yeah. or maybe on you know an apartment complex wherever it you know was you know on top of the fence you know whatever it was yeah because uh, i know you had plenty of amazing vantage you know views or viewpoints oh of some of the games as well so yeah. that definitely has to be included There's but so ellie much to tell. so much to right tell. There is. Yeah. Big up, Ellie. Brian, Brian Daigle, the scarf. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't show him the price. That's, 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 that's right, That's the way we have met to a bull, Ellie. Big up, Ellie. I really appreciate it. Big Ellie. up, Ellie. Yeah, thank you very much, Larry. Appreciate you. I'm going to be watching the rest of the show now, so. 
appreciate I, you. I always enjoy your show. You know that. I appreciate Ellie. Thank I'll you, Ellie. You. Where's Shamu tonight? Because come on, Shamu. Come he's on. probably he, it's early his time. It's early his time. That's all yeah. I know. And he's he's a bit of a nocturnal as well. So I think he stays up late, you know, and kind of like, you know, he, he can't wake up him. too early sometimes. But he puts in 24-7 shifts for the Harris Army. That's all I can say, just like you, Ellie. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll look out for who you've got on after me because oh, we've got a few, we've got a good few yeah, there. We've I got can't plenty. wait. I can't yeah, wait. Really I can't wait. All Big right. Up, Appreciate it. Take care. They got belly. Yeah. Time. Appreciate you as always, Bye. Bye. I just want to say, don't worry. There will be nothing wrong. We won't get anything wrong. It'll all be proofread before it goes out. Don't worry about that. But Jacko, look, let's let's start flying through some of these uh, super chats, my man. This is the one that I had next, and everybody, you know, of course, it's way beyond the chat. The chat's been absolutely blowing it's up, as well as in terms of, in, as well as in terms of the donations and the support for the Harris Army and for David and I has been absolutely insane. So, if we did miss any, please let us know, and we'll be sure to correct it. And we do apologize. It's just been very hard to keep up with it, and it's just because you guys are that amazing. It's been that hard to keep up with. Uh, but yeah. Jerome, again, Jerome, really do appreciate you've been an absolute legend. Thanks for joining the the fan show tonight. He says I was supporting Spurs since the era Gaza and Lineker. No matter how bad things are, I will die as a Spurs fan, and my children will be Spurs fans as well. Come on, you Spurs, he says. I would say you could break that down a couple of ways. You could say, you know, maybe in, in response to William Kelly, I know this is how William Ke William Kelly secretly feels as much as he's losing patience. Yeah. I know he just, I just know he's going to be still dying as a Spurs fan. He just can't get rid of it. You know, once you bite the bug, Dave, you can't get rid of it. Just can't get rid of it. And as well, I would say, you know, some have said, you know, it's a bit of, you know, torture, even a crime to, you know, make your kids Spurs fans. But, you know, it's yeah. all learning moments, you know, at the end of the day, it's just football and you just have to give them the, those kind of life, you know, lessons, Dave. And maybe being a Spurs fan, I would say you learn a lot more lessons as a person than you would as a Chelsea fan or a Man United fan yeah. or even an Eagles fan, Dave, you know, for, for for Crystal Palace. All I can say is Spurs teaches you, teaches you a lot of, you know, life values, a lot of life lessons more than the rest of the clubs do. No, it definitely does. It definitely does. And look, Jerome. Gaza, one an amazing player to watch, my man. Lineker, yeah, good, good, good player to watch, my man. We got him near the end of his career. Uh, but two great players there, my man. And look, exactly, no matter how things get, look, we could be down in, you know, Division 3. I'll still be diehard Spurs fan. Don't worry about that. And so will my children, my man, if I ever have any. So will they. You know, 100% are going to put, you know, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good grounding in life for, uh, for, for the kids. You know, it's a good grounding in life that not everything's going to go their own way. So big yourself up, Jerome. Really appreciate it. Really big yourself up, Jerome. Uh, really just, do appreciate you. I do think we actually missed a few. I'm not 100% sure, but I think we did. But look, sorry, guys, if we did. Um, just to explain, you can only see so much on the chat before it disappears um, if you don't get through it quick enough on the stream yard. So I do apologize. Might and actually that's have on to us. And we might have to get a special feature off them or something like that. So we will. But look, Jiminy says, I think we're also forgetting that we no longer have bail towards the end of this at the end of his time here, he played amazingly. He was a great goal scorer. He showed up for Kane. We're missing that with Sonny out. Yeah, look, Bale showed up. In fairness, he did show up. I think, look, for me, more so towards the end of the season than the first half of the season, I'll be honest with you. But look, you know, he did have a very, very good second half of the season, I have to say, for Tottenham Hotspur. And credit where credit's due. And we are definitely missing that. But look, a lot of fans reckon Stevie B is the man. So we'll wait and see. Jacko, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I would like to see Stevie B or Lucas, Brian Hill, uh, Tongi, whoever it is, to make up for maybe uh, Bale's contributions. I feel like it doesn't need to come from just one player. It can definitely come from multiple players. I think David put that well, though, where Bale really didn't do really anything until the second half of the season. So it must be said. I mean, the guy was on whatever, you know, a, a country's GDP per week, practically, you know, without doing anything uh, before, you know, he started scoring. So I must be said, you know, as much as the guy produced numbers, Dave, you know, if you're on 350,000 pounds a week, I mean, geez, <laughs> like, I don't know. I think he could have produced a bit more, definitely, maybe. And I don't think it had anything to do with Jose either, personally. So I just feel like in the case of Bale, yeah, he produced great numbers yes he saved us in that Leicester game absolutely was immense you can't ever replace somebody like that uh, but I would say in terms of the price point you know maybe you can't put a price on that but I certainly would with how expensive he was I, that's all I would say probably was causing you know Daniel Levy a few headaches is what I would say uh, with how much he was costing us and uh, yeah. my final thing is hopefully just hopefully you could say Tongi, Brian Hill, 
Lucas, and Stevie B can make up for the numbers that Bale had. I don't think it needs to come from one player, Jiminy. No, 100%. I couldn't agree more. Big up, Jiminy. I really appreciate the support, my man. You're a top man. And thank you so much, man. Um, and yeah, look, I just want Sonny back just as much as you do, Jiminy. We need him. We need him back for Chelsea. We need him back for our, um, you know, Arsenal potentially. We need him back for Rennes during the week. I just want him back, Jiminy. So look, maybe me, you, Dark Sung G, Jack, Marcelo, you know, we all need to get together and start, you know, forming a, a shield around Hyung Min Sun to stop getting him injured. But big up, I really appreciate it. Dark Sung G. I think this uh, was no, the one, Dark might be before this one. I, okay. Unless. This is before that one, so I just want to make sure we're still getting in the best order again. And we do apologize, everybody. So Dave and I will make it up oh, to you. No, next no, it's not Jack. This one was before. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry about yeah. that. Sorry about that. And Dark Song G says we can now ship out Easy Pass in January or the summer. Better Utes and skip uh, for homegrown. So now there is no more excuse and point in keeping him. Kick him out. Yeah, look, no more excuses. Skip is homegrown. Tanganga's homegrown. You know, there's a few more there. Harvey White, Alfie Devine, Dane Scarlett, of course, Harry Kane. So there's a lot of them there that qualify towards the home grown list now. So um, we don't we don't have that excuse. And I couldn't agree more with you. I'd Look, I want him gone in January. I'll be honest with you. I don't want to wait any longer with this guy. I want him gone so that now I never have to look forward to I never have to worry about this guy in the starting lineup ever again. Couldn't agree more, Dark Sung G. What's your thoughts, Jacko? Darkson G, I just have to ask, you know, if you do watch any of the K-League or if you watch any of the Korean League, are there any rivals that you might have that, you know, you feel like maybe you could put in a good word in, you know, to them maybe saying, you know, look, listen, there's, you know, it's kind of like a Jack Wheelshire situation over there at Tottenham. You know, he just needs a new club, you know, a new atmosphere, shipping them over to the Korean League. Maybe just watch them, you know, absolutely torture, you know, your rival team. But, you know, I'm kind of not a really big fan of the MLS, you know, Dark Sun G. So I will say, you know, you're probably might be like me you don't really watch very much of the k-league but if you do and you have a rival team or a rival club just let me know k uh dark sun g and i'd like to see maybe you can negotiate some type of transfer deal over there maybe they might even put up the big bucks that daniel levy might want as well uh, but all i can say is definitely get the youths in and only maybe focus on maybe some of these homegrown talents like skip white and, and, and plenty of center mids that we have niall john could easily replace i think even despite being more attacking could easily replace winks in every way I just really agree with you, Dark Sanji. And I, again, I'll say it a million times. I absolutely love how much he cares about, you know, our youth, Dave. And he just thinks yeah. to, he just seems to think that, you know, and, and I think he's right, easy pass and whatnot. They're practically corrupting, poisoning, you know, even the youth academy as well. And I, I yeah. just Dark Sanji, like I said, if I could hire you to be in Nuno's ear, I would do it in a heartbeat. Couldn't agree more. Big up, Dark Sanji, my man. Really appreciate the support, top man. Uh, Jerome, big up, Jerome. He says, since we have Skip and Heiberg to cover the defense, we should free end on Belly and let him do his thing. I hope he plays against Ren. Um, look, do you know what? I'm uh, look. Uh, I would rather play end on Belly over Harry Winks all day, every day, all day, every day. Look, I have my crimes with um, end on Belly, but look, for me, he has to play over Winks, uh, especially. Look, and it could be something that could definitely work. You know, skipping Hoiberg, the protectors, let end on Belly have a free roam uh, in midfield. But look, I don't think Nuno will let that happen, be honest. I think Nuno wants his three midfielders to all be very hard work and all, all pitch in, you know, all turn ball over, protect the back line as well. But um, look, I do hope um, Endo Bele gets minutes against Renz and let's see what he can do. Jacko, what's your thoughts? I think he, he definitely deserves minutes against Ren. It'd be a good opportunity for him against maybe a bit of a lesser side, you know, to, to prove himself again, you know, what we've been missing. Uh, but like David said, you know, Nuno does value that hard working, that box to box, that runner kind of mentality, that ability to work for each other. And Tongi really doesn't necessarily have that. And maybe the only way we could get that to him, you know, maybe I might help out a little bit. Maybe I'll help pay for, you know, Tongi's Uber Eats pass or whatever it may be, you know, to get him to work a bit harder. Uh, but that's all I can say is, you know, like David had said, you know, Nuno does value that hard work does value you know that determination you know that willing to fight for the next guy you know the guy beside you and Tongi doesn't necessarily have that and he definitely needs to learn that ability and whatever it takes you know to, to get him to learn that I would do it 100% I couldn't agree more but big up Jerome I really appreciate the support my man I really really do appreciate the support you're an absolute legend my man thank you so much uh, guys I just want to say if we did miss any super chats at all just put it in the comment right now and uh, I'll bring them up and I will discuss them. I don't think we missed uh, too many. I think we might have only missed one or two, if even. But uh, look, guys, keep getting the Super Chats in. The chat is absolutely hot. And you want to skip the chat. You know, you want to you get your opinion read out. You know, get your Super Chats in, guys. It is a great, great way to skip, uh, to, uh, skip, the, um, skip the chat. And, uh, you know, and it's a great way to help support the channel as well. So big yourself up. 
But look, let's get on the next guest. We do have a few more guests in the background. We will get them on. Um, and uh, yeah, look, so let's get them on. It's it's our man, Chris. Big up, Chris. And uh, I'm just going to run to the jacks quickly and then I'll be back. Chris, that means it's just you and me, like always again, you know, maybe a bit of a mid of the duo where I just kind of start feeding you maybe some of these, you know, you could take it in the comedic end. You could take it, you know, down the rant end, Chris, but you know, you know the deal between you and me. Uh, What's up, I don't think I don't I don't think I can do the comedic side tonight. I'm too I, pissed off. I, I, I'm still I like either version of you, Chris. I love either version. Well, let's you know what? Should we start for the laugh? Actually, apparently, uh, Ben Davis is a rated seven out of a ten as a defender. Where did that come from? Where did that come? Tell me, please. Uh, am I was I watching the same Ben Davis who was rated seven out of ten on Saturday? What uh, I, mean? I, I I, apparently, you know, even I've heard before, Chris, uh, some have even said the reason why, you know, it's funny. They even admitted to, you know, the Mr. Anonymous nickname from the past. They just said, you know, he doesn't do very much, but he's always a consistent six out of 10, seven out of 10. And I was like, it sounds like it just means that people just don't really remember whatever he does on the pitch. So they just will say, oh, we'll just give him a six. So because we just don't remember what he did. Do you know what, Jack? When I saw that uh, certain, certain people saying he was a seven out of 10, I just sat back and I was like, is, is that the same one? You conceded a penalty. Probably were checking the prescriptions on the glasses, you know, Chris, maybe just, you know, making sure, you know, the doctor sent you the right one. Do you know what? First of all, he was like, he conceded a penalty in the 67th minute. Then all of a sudden, he loses on uh, their, uh, their new Osman, uh, Edward, for the second goal. And then the third goal as well. Now, I am sorry, but whoever wants to rate Ben Davis as a 7 out of 10 needs to stop watching football. Just go watch cricket or watch basketball or something else. Not football, because obviously they don't know what they're watching. Mm -hmm. Normally Dude, I don't it, start off with a rant, but that that for what Ben Davis's comments was absolutely pathetic. Maybe Ben, maybe let's just move on to Ben. Why not? You know, Chris, we can just jump right into it. Do you feel like maybe what hurt us maybe the most this match? Was it, you know, the Jaffet's red card? Was it Eric Dyer's injury, the three CDMs, or was it just simply it, Ben Davies? It was all all of it, all of all combined. First of all, it's the Nuno's team selection. Why you pay three cent defensive midfielders? I have not don't understand it. Then you've got Larissa's distribution again yeah. at fault for a Dyer's injury. And normally I would slag Dyer off big time, but he's been one of our most consistent players this season. Definitely. And then. You know, well, Chris, were you feeling this, Chris? Were you feeling that moment where you're like, wow, I'm actually surprised, to, you know, I'm a bit saddened to see Moon Boots go off? Did you feel a bit yeah, hurt it was, to see Moon Boots go he, off? It was because up to 12 minutes until he got injured, he was actually playing pretty well. Mm. But yeah. then, obviously, Lloris had a brush of blood to his head again and overpassed the ball. And then it, that, then it's it, game over for him. But then Rodon came on and done all right. Yeah. And but, maybe speaking of Rodon, you know, quickly, do you feel like Rodon, I, we said it in our lessons learned, do you feel like Rodon is one of these guys that actually is kind of good when, you know, shit hits the fan, Chris? Like, he just yeah. seems to be this guy that is, you know, he's not the most glamorous. He's not the best defender in the world by any means, but he certainly just seems to, when things are at their absolute worst, he seems to hold himself together. He, ste he stepped up. I can't fault him. He stepped up. He played pretty well. Him and Jaffet were doing really, really well together. They played yeah. absolutely so and I can't fault Rodon. He played really, really well. I think him and Lucas were the only two players on the whole pitch that actually put a bit of effort in. Yeah. Only yeah. two. The rest of them, Skip, maybe he's got he's carrying that injury from when he's played international. The other player, I don't even want to mention his name. I don't want to see him in the Tottenham shirt again. Uh, I don't so want to go along with this super chat then, Chris, with from Team Man 007. He says, we don't <laughs> want uh, Winks, but value him at 40 million. We want a Traore, but value him at 30 million. Can the Spurs fans not see the problem here? Yes, Levy. Do you think Winks is still here because we are overpricing him? And what would you say to Tim, man? Yeah, I agree. 40 million for Winks. What is Daniel Levy thinking? What is he actually thinking, Dave? For real, what is he actually thinking? Price him at 40 million. What does he what, does he say something we don't? I don't know. I want what he's on anyway. David, <laughs> I'll tell you what, after the performance he put in on Saturday. Yeah. I would, do you know what? I just could not believe how stupid Nuno was actually putting him in. I know. I couldn't believe myself, Chris. Do Chris, you do you feel like... Enough? Sorry, Jack. No, no, David, you give your question. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, no, sorry. Chris, quickly, do you think we lost the game from the off? Yeah, we did. It was a combination of everything, David, right? As I said to Jack, first of all, it was the team selection going too defensive. It was almost Jose-esque. And I said that in the comments earlier, so I'm not going to back down from that. 
Then you've got Lloris overplaying the ball, causing an injury to probably one of our most consistent players this season. I know I slate Dyer a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But then I can't yeah. fault Dyer. He's been our most consistent player. Oh, yeah. He has been. I've been saying that as well. Right? Now, Lloris has done it again. He's usual. To, he'll have two or three good, one or two good games. Then he goes back to his old habits. <laughs> flapping for the ball like a bird and then <laughs> overpassing the ball. Come on, man. No. <laughs> no, not again. David, no, Lloris' habits are getting coming back to him again, and he's, he needs to cut that out of his game again. No, he I does. Agree. He does, Chris. Chris, I'm about to give a comment to Tin Man Super Chat here, and you know, you're welcome to chime in after it's it. Tin Man, all I can say is I'm actually quite fearful, and this just popped in my head that maybe after Winks had that you know game against Real Madrid, that maybe at one point Levy did receive maybe a 40 million bid, you know, from Barcelona. We know Barcelona, you know, did not know how to handle finances, so maybe they sent in a 40 million bid for Christ's sake. They paid whatever 30 million, 40 million for Paulinho from China uh, to come over. So it seems like they probably pay that much for. For Winks to come over. Maybe that actually happened at one point where they received a bid for around 40 million from Real Madrid or Barcelona. And, and maybe Levy's just been waiting for that bid to, you know, to eventually come back. That's all I can say. And he's being a bit too stubborn about it. And maybe he should have taken it while he could. And he's just his biggest business regret for the club, maybe. Absolutely. That's a, a Daniel Levy asking 40 million for Winks is absolutely absurd. Who in their right mind is going to be stupid enough to pay 40 million for him? Yeah. Who's going to be that stupid? But Aston Villa turned it down because they said he was too expensive. Everton turned him down so it's too expensive. Leeds didn't want him. Newcastle didn't want him. Who's going to want to pay 40 million for wings? Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Well, Tim, man, I hope you enjoyed the answers from Chris and Jack and myself there, my man. Big up for the super chat. And uh, William Kelly says, um, I appreciate the hard-working players, but if you don't have a creative midfielder in that team, you're going to struggle big time. What would you say mm. to William Kelly, Chris? Agreed. Nothing else but agreed. We had nothing on Saturday, nothing at all. No, no end on Billy, no kill. We yeah. had three defensive midfielders. Well, two and a half defensive midfielders. What do you think of Brian Hill not playing? Not even getting, not even seeing a minute. Not getting on at half time, not starting. What do you think? Wasn't impressed. Really? Delhi should have been in the centre of the midfield with um, Hoyby and Skip and had yeah. Hill up front. With um, yep. Kane and, and Lucas. That should have been it. Should have been the three up front. Not Winks. No. No. Because there was basically, we could have parked a double decker bus in front of that in that, in that mid, in midfield. It was so wide open. Yeah. No, no I, I agree. Uh, William, look, for me, look, I agree with you. I appreciate the hardworking players like Skip, like Hoiberg. You know what I mean? I, look, I actually firmly believe Winks is put in there to kind of be that guy with the passing and, you know, passing it left, right, trying to pass it forward. But look, hopefully Nuno has learned his lesson. You know, um, hopefully. If, look, I, I think, look, the thing is, we have to remember, right, we had six players out. He had so many players to pick from. Yes, he got it wrong. 100% he got it wrong. But when we have them six players back, this result won't happen you know, um, you know, and I, I look, the creative problem will still be there until he does get that sorted out. I do believe that. But look, the result wouldn't happen. I do think we probably would have grounded out one or two nil win. I do think it probably would have been that bit different. But um, look, he got it wrong. And just hopefully now he realizes he can't rely on Harry Winks in that midfield whatsoever, especially if he's going to play a, a partnership of a skip and Heiberg. So big up, William Kelly. I really appreciate the support, my man. Top man, everyone else, keep getting the super chats in, guys. It helps skip the queue. It's a great way to support the channel. And look, guys, we will keep getting everybody's comments up. I do apologize. It's just been an absolute hectic chat today. You guys are not happy out there, that's for sure. But Jacko, any more questions here for Chris? No, David, just I'll quickly. Go, I, I want to say one thing. Yeah. Now there was two or three occasions. Yeah, where Region was open on the wing, Emerson was open on the wing, and yep. Wings had the ball at his foot. What did he do? Pass it backwards. There was so many opportunities. There was even a couple of the these. I saw a couple of these, Chris. Yeah, like yeah from, from Emerson. That. From Emerson. See, I'm open. Pass me the ball. And what does Wings do? Turns around and passes it back. Yeah. Reggio, I mean, Reggio, at one point, he could have been directing a plane, Chris, it looked like, you yeah. know, just uh, on the side, exactly. you know, on the tarmac. It was constant in the first half, especially in the first half. It was absolutely constant. Passes were just going backwards, going yeah. backwards, going back, going to the side. Emerson's up wide open. He's broke through with his marker. 
Yeah, Break and, he, and even as well, he was getting past Zaha as well because Emerson, you know, he had to deal with Zaha and those balls in behind. Some people are saying Emerson was getting turned right. I think that what it was is what you're talking about, Chris. Emerson was actually getting far forward, and he was at, what was happening was Winks, Skippy, even Hoybier were even losing it in the middle of the field at points, and Emerson was just like, "Well, why did I even go forward if these guys can't even deliver it to me past year? Exactly. What's my job as a fullback?" So I think that, and even impressively, Emerson would actually with like ten yards, like behind Zaha would actually be able to catch up to him. So it does show maybe he does have a bit more pace than even we actually yeah. thought as well. But Because Kaka, Zaha just, is no, by no means not you know a slow player. He's very rapid, you would say. So yeah, Emerson was able was to catch up to him multiple times. Half. It was yeah. evident in the first half how many times we had the opportunity to go for it and the ball was just being played, played backwards. Mm. There was no attacking intent. Mm. Yeah. And then, Chris, you know, maybe in terms of that attacking intent, you know, people are saying, you know, the creative midfielders were missing, but do you feel like then, you know, that's what's just Nuno's just going to have to realize is that, you know, maybe he's going to even have to drop the two CDMs and if, if possible, maybe the Skippy Hoybier combination won't be maybe something that he can rely on as much as he thought. He's going to have to be a bit riskier, do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think he would just have to play one of the two. But not and always, play- or do you feel like always he'll have to do it? Well, uh, if we, let's, if say we play Chelsea, like, uh, let's say for Chelsea, would you rather see Skippy and Hoybier maybe together? No, no. Mm. I want to see us attacking Chelsea. I don't want us to sit back because we're going to get punished otherwise. Mm. We're going to get ripped apart. And I don't want to, but you know what? I'd rather see us attack, attack them. Mm. Just do what yeah. we did to Man City. Shut them down and go at, go at them. Right. No, absolutely, Chris. Absolutely, Chris. And then maybe because again. Because if we, if we sit back against Chelsea, we're going to get, we're going to get our asses turned. And that's a fact. Yeah, I mean, uh, I do agree with you, Chris. And then Nick, again, I guess since we're talking about Chelsea, Chris, and you're saying, you know, you want to take it to them, would you kind of match them then? I know they do that five in the back, three in the back. Would you rather just stick with our four, three, three? Would you want to go to a a bit of a three in the back or something? How would you feel like we should go about it then if you want to be a bit more attacking? Chelsea play three at back anyway. They've they've been known to play three at back this season. That's what they exclusively do, yeah. Well, I think we should match them toe to toe. Just go 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 at them. Just not not hold back. Because yeah. if we play too content, we, we ain't got a chance against them. We haven't. Yeah. And I, I want I'm being realistic. I want us to see it. Even if we do lose this game two one or one nil, I don't care. I want to see us attack. Do you think I want that's us to show of... a bit of bottle. Interesting. Is that your is that your lesson then? Would you say because you know one of the, one of our questions here, you know, Chris says, you know, what lessons would you take away from the Crystal Palace match? Is that seems like that's your main message that you're saying here, and that's the lesson you would probably give to Nuno, Chris, right? Is you know, at a certain point, we just have to go for it. Yeah, we do. We can't look. We went so defensive against Crystal Palace. It was like we were there for a draw, not even for the win. Yeah. Hmm. It was. It was either just take settle for the point and be happy with it. Hmm. And Gallagher yeah. ate, ate up our midfield. He ate them up and spat them out. Yeah. And he did it on more than one occasion. McCarthy, the same. Ty, Tyrese Mitchell, the same. It yeah. was just it, the whole game. It wasn't just 10 minutes of the game. It was, it was more or less 65 minutes of it. And with more creative players, maybe just play, more players like Tongi, maybe Dali on the field, Gio on the field. Of course, Gio, a lot of these players weren't really available. But do you feel like, Chris... What you're maybe saying is we would at least be able to have more possession, and with more possession means actually is in a way a defense in itself, right? We wouldn't have to exactly, you know, have to, yeah, exactly. But we had two shots on goal the whole game. Yeah, we had two shots on target the whole yeah. whole, whole ninety minutes, where yeah. they peppered us about twenty five shots. We had two. Yeah, yeah, Chris, it's hard to argue with that. Really, is hard, and I can't it's, to be honest. It's the the proof is there in the game. Everybody watched it. I watched it yeah. until the 80th minute and I got fed up and turned it off. <laughs> I did, I turned it off. David, I got so annoyed. I just said, you know what? I can't watch any more of this. It's ridiculous. Uh, Speaking of David, a game then, then you won't turn off, Chris, because I'm pretty sure you're not going to be turning off this one. Might be that Thursday game, you know, against Renz. And I do apologize maybe to, you know, the flat cap Euro experts, you know, like Sean Snow and the rest of these boys. You know, they're honestly absolute geniuses of the, of the European game when I called uh, Renz maybe a bit of a lesser team. And I would say in Renz, yeah, I might be I might be wrong. You know, they're probably actually the toughest team that will play in our group. So this is actually going to be the toughest game of our uh, of our European Conference League group. Chris, do you feel like this could be the game where you might actually maybe earn a bit more respect, you know, a bit more positivity towards the club? Or do you feel like this might actually be, again, a tougher game than we might think? 
it's, I think it's going to be a tougher game than we might think. If if we drop um, Davis and um, Skip in the English Channel, sorry, not Skip, Winks and um, Ben Davis in the English Channel somewhere, we might have half a chance. No, you can't. You have to do it in international waters, Chris. You can't do it in the English channels. You have to do it in international waters where there might be a uh, bit we'll, of a. We'll drop, drop them in the Atlantic somewhere then, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> so we might have half a chance. But no, all jokes aside, I think, I think this might be a good game for Tangi to come back in, integrate back into the team. Mm. Yeah. Because if I remember rightly, this is how Jose done it with him last season, was it? He, he didn't start him in the first few games of the Premiership, then he brought him back for the Europa League. And he performed. Yeah. Mm. So it, it, it might it might be a case of integrating him back into the team for the Europe Conference to see how he gets on. And if he mm. plays well, he might get he's earn his way back into the team again. But he just needs to earn it. Not not just think he can walk just because he's the two hundred grand a week man doesn't think he can walk straight back into the team. He don't work like that. He needs to yeah. earn it. Do you know what? I actually agree with you. I actually would yeah. like to see him against Renz. I don't want to see Harry Winks in there. I'd rather see Tanga in there. At least you might see a bit of creativity, and to be honest with you, Scarlett will absolutely love it if he does play, because you know, you mean it means it means he can make runs and he will be found. So I think it's absolutely brilliant point there, Chris. I have to say, uh, anything else you want to speak about, my man? Before we let you go, well, I will tell you what, yeah, all I need, all I, all I want to see is us attack, not just sit back and defend anymore like that, because it's evident we just don't know how to defend. Yeah, we just don't know how to defend. It's, it, we ain't a defensive team. Without the midfielders there, right, the likes of Hoybio, Skip, who win their hundred percent, and Deli Ali playing in that centre midfield, because I still can't understand why he was put on the left wing because he cannot do it. Yeah, that is the one thing I still do not get why do Nuno tried to play him on the left wing. Do you think that Nuno can play attacking football? Because look, I know a lot of Wolves fans. It was they, they were very split. Some were saying, look, he was trying to be attacking. Others were saying it was very defensive. So, look, if we are going off, off what some of the Wolves fans were saying when they were saying he's very defensive, do you think Nuno can change his ways and become attacking? Well, D- David, look, when he was at Barcelona, no, Valencia and Porto, he was a very, very attacking manager. He was a very attacking manager. He, had, he would he would go out, go out for a full-out attack. With yeah. Wolves, I'll give him his due because he had those serious injuries where he had, didn't have a striker. It was more like with Jose in the first season when we didn't have a striker for so many matches. Yeah, so, not even that. I would say it was like Liverpool's defense, but in the attack, where Liverpool were missing so many players in the defense, I think it was the same for Wolves. It was like in their yeah, attack. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you, you, you don't forget you had Raul Jimenez with that serious head injury. You had Diogo Jota who had been sold to Liverpool. You had Daniel Podence was Ruben, gone. Yeah, Neves with an injury. Moutinho mm-hmm. with an injury. So he had so many injury Neto problems. With an injury. Wolves. Yeah, Neto with an injury. So at yeah. Wolves, you could see the they had striker problems. Ours, there's no excuse. We should be we should be winning games comfortably, not sitting and holding for a one 0 win. There's no excuse for it. I agree. We've agree. got the players. We've got the talent there to, to win games comfortably. Kane, Bergwijn, if he shows up, Lucas, if he shows up, Hill, Tange, Hoybier, Skip. Do you know what yeah. I mean? We've got all those players there who actually could turn on. Easy pass and catastrophe. St- no, they can just go. Just, just put them on a free transfer somewhere in li- in this League Two in France or somewhere. No, look, give give, give them a job of helping Doris in the canteen or something like that, Chris. But look, no, I wouldn't. Tr- I wouldn't trust them with the cups of tea, um, Dave. I wouldn't <laughs> trust them with the cups of tea, man. They might just for- just forget to put the water in or something, man. I can't shake your hands, Chris. I think shaking yeah. hands, yeah, probably. Hey, shake your hands, shaky everything with them through the way that they were, they were playing on Saturday. It was like they would just look like we just lost control. <laughs> oh, stop! A hundred percent. Well, look, Chris, I really appreciate you coming on. I really appreciate you waiting in the background for us for as long as you did this while, well, my man. Thank you. And uh, I'll see you again shortly, my man. See you again. See you lot soon. Legend. Come Chris. on, you Spurs. Oh, legend as email always. Me. Email me. Yeah, I, will, I will do, Dave. Yeah. Because I'm a full week this week anyway, so. Yeah, no, email me. Email me. Uh, I will do, man. Big up, Chris. I'll we'll see talk you again. soon, Chris. We'll talk see to you later, soon. Jack. See, see you later, man. See you, Chris. See Good you, night. See you, Chris. Bye-bye. Absolute legend, Chris. Everybody, you know, he's always so kind to everyone in the comments and everything else. Big up, Chris. Well, yeah, that's I'm well said. Nice. Actually, well said, David. Everybody, you know, that's your favorite man in the comments is Chris. He always bigs up everybody. He always says hi to everyone in the Harris Army. He's an absolute saint. He's an absolute saint he of the is. Harris Army. Well, look, let's go from one one channel legend to another. You know, we've been on a roll. Mm-hmm. Joe, Ellie, Chris. Now we're going on 
to another channel legend, and it's the other half of the uh, of the show with Ellie, and it's our man Philip. Philip, how are you keeping my man? Yeah, good lads, very good, very good. First of all, I want to say I do appreciate you waiting uh, for as long as you did in the background, my man. I really appreciate that. No so look, take it away. You know, you, you you know yourself at this point what to do. So just give us views. Give us your views. Well, what what? 48 60 hours after saturday still not happy <laughs> still fuming a bit over it you know um i don't know uh maybe you could start lightly on ben davies a lot of people have been saying like chris you know there are certain countries if not bodies of water you know they would like to you know leave them in or drop them off and you know uh or is there maybe is that how you feel about ben davies at this certain well, at this point i'm over the english channel on wednesday to go to Ren, so you know <laughs> Drop him in still make it over to Rens, yeah. The, cur the current, <laughs> the current would take him. <laughs> um, now, nah, I mean, I mean, Ben Davis is reaching out to shake hands with one of the Palace players when the ball hit his arm on Saturday. You know, I mean, he, he's a bit, a bit too friendly. Now, like, I mean, but the, my only concern is, I mean, we can give out about Davis, we can give out about Winks, but I can nearly tell you, they'll probably both be playing on Thursday night. Oh, don't do it to wow. me, please. You know, because let's face it, you know, how much does Nuno read social media? Nuno's probably looking at their training stats and stuff like that. And that's what he bases his team selection on, not what we're giving out about on here. No, 100%. But he should be looking at stats from other managers. And any time they've played, they've cost them big shots, big no, games. Really, that's what never happened. Really, I agree with you. I agree with you. But let's look at it this way. We're not going to have the boys, the the, the, the the escaped prisoners from Argentina back. <laughs> I mean, the last time they were heard, they were, they were, they were training. I had, to, I had to laugh at this. I had to, I had to look up this place. The, the, the two Villa players that are, that are uh, quarantining in Croatia are training on the Hadjug split ground. Now, Hadjug split, Spurs have had a few good games with them over the years, right? The three Spurs players are training in the at NK Zupa Dubrovka, which is a club uh, situated near Dubrovnik with a capacity in the ground of, wait for it, 100 people. Sounds oh. intimate. Sounds intimate, Philip. What, what's wrong with it? Very. And the Spurs players <laughs> apparently have been told to keep their mouths shut and say nothing. Not talk to the press. Not talk to anybody. Uh, the club have acknowledged that they're there. They're happy to facilitate the guys. They're there. But they're there under the veil of secrecy. They're coming back on Saturday. They're going to be heavily fined. Unlike the Villa players who went with the club's permission... Our boys went off on a, on a, on a Beano on their own. Yeah. So, we're, okay, that's go, just going off on a tangent there. We're not going to have them back for uh, Rens on, on Thursday, right? We're probably not going to have them back for, for Chelsea on Saturday, even though they are training down there. So, you know, I'd say now there's going to be quite a hefty fine levied out to those guys. But go back to the Rens match. I mean, Nick, he doesn't want to make the same mistake as he made against Ferro Roche the last time there, yeah. playing all the young kids. Rens yeah. are a serious addition, a serious upgrade from Paco yes. Ferreira. And we don't try to take this match seriously. We are going to get turned over because those guys are yeah. no dozers. I think they'll also be quite up for it too, Philip, because you consider these type of competitions are actually made for teams like Ren. You know, they're actually going to be seeing themselves that this is the type of competition that, you know, this even this tournament was made for them, right? You know, these are the ones that, you know, they'll actually see as their Champions League even, even Absolutely. though they were in the Champions League last season, I believe. I mean, this, this is their cup final this season. Tottenham Hotspur coming to town with all the big stars, you know, Harry Kane, Hung Min Son, Hugo Lloris. You know, they're, they're, they're going to be chomping at the bit. And unless mm. we get our act together and be our attitude right on Thursday night, well, this could be a very, very, very tricky game. It's I the agree. hardest one in the group, but it's a tough one to start with. I'd rather have had a home game to start with just to, you know, bed things in after yeah. last week, but you can't have everything. But, like, you know, we're, we're going to have to watch that team selection. And it's you know, the problem he's got, he's got Chelsea on Sunday, he's got Rennes on Thursday. How is he going to balance the two? Yeah. Even so, uh, Philip, I've said this before as well, you know, it's actually quite shocking that, you know, they go to Thursday and then, you know, even for some of these games where they are playing the youth, you know, certain players that get left behind then, you know, right in, in London, you know, to train as well. It, it's all a bit confusing, right? Because you have to consider that not everyone gets taken, you know, to the game in, in France. So certain players get left behind in London that are actually, you know, mainstays yeah. in the squad. So it's all a bit confusing about how it gets managed. Do you feel like maybe this is something we haven't thought of? 
none of the first 11 Thursday travel- night games are very different than Wednesday night games, I guess is Absolutely. what I'm saying. I mean, none of the first 11 traveled out to Paco Ferreira, not one of them. Yeah. That can't be repeated. That cannot be repeated. Absolutely not. There has to be at least a nucleus of that first 11 traveling out. And again, I would think it's nearly imperative that Ndombele starts on Thursday. Mm. This is the game that's made for him to reintegrate himself into the team. You know, put him in there as a as a creative midfielder. Because let's face it, <laughs> we didn't have one on Saturday. Yeah. You know, mm. there was no creation. One shot on target in 90 minutes. That that's embarrassing. That that is yeah, terrible. Do you so think like, do you think then Dumbelli playing in France, Philip, might might give him that bit of inspiration he needs to kickstart his season? Because we are playing away Thursday night. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, I mean, if if I was if I was from the country that um, the, 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 the team is playing in next with a chance to re, reinvent myself, I mm. would be dying to get playing. You know, yeah. I mean, pride, if, if, if he has any pride in his own performance, he's going to want to go out there and show the French people. Like, there'll be 29,000 people at this match if, if the French have the restrictions lifted. That's what their ground holds. So it's not going to be like the 9,000 or 2,000, whatever it was at, in, in Portugal. This is going to be a serious atmosphere on, on Thursday night. And uh, it's t- time for Ndombele to step up and earn his money, earn his two hundred grand a week. And who knows, this this could be the thing that kickstarts him. And what a boost for the team if he starts performing on a regular basis. You know, it, it, he's had two and a half seasons now, or two and a quarter seasons of basically doing feck all, except yeah. for the odd bit of genius. Mm. So he's yeah. got to start producing it on a more regular basis. You know, who is alongside him on the team? I do not know. I think. You know, uh, you've, you, you, we're not going to see Harry Kane playing. We're not going to see Hyung Min Son, which is another thing. I'm getting a bit worried about Hyung Min Son. There's supposed to be a club statement about him. What's happened? You know, yeah. How bad is he? You know, that, that's that's a good cause for concern, Philip. That is a great question because Nuno did say we were going to get a club statement yeah. because when he was asked about it, he, he said we'll have we'll wait for the club statement to come out and explain what's going on. So where is the statement? Nothing. Absolutely, there's crickets. I mean, you know, you, you want you, if when, when the manager says something like that, the PR department should be on it straight away. Not what's going to happen now is there's going to be speculation. The son is going to pick up, or son must have a serious injury. He's going to be yeah. out for weeks. That's Spurs finish for the season. That you know, so they, this this is where they've got to nip these things in the bud. You know, no. I'm hoping the guy he isn't badly injured, but I'm getting a bit concerned. Because uh, like Son, Son is a player that we badly need in that team on, on Sunday. No. Badly I need. I agree. Just quickly, uh, look, there. I've seen a lot of this debate going around. You know, I didn't really want to talk about it today, but me and Jack got suckered into it by some of the people in the comments with the super chats and all. So look, I'm going to sucker you into it as well, Philip. <laughs> you know, but look, you are usually the face of reason, to be fair. So I'm really looking forward to hearing your answer. But where do you stand on the Kane and Son debate? <laughs> I'm sure you've seen it. Do you need me to explain it to you? Well, I tell you, I have been a wee bit up, but otherwise engaged in the last couple of days. So. Right. So, look, some people are saying that, you know, Spurs are a better team. Um, you know, that Son is better than Kane. He's more valuable to Tottenham than Kane in terms of that when Kane is out, Son can carry Tottenham, but when Son is out, Kane can't. Where would you stand on this debate? I would say some people have very short memories. <laughs> Well, look back to last season. Look back to last season. What those two did, mm. you know. I mean, they're like Morecambe and Wise. You don't. <laughs> I don't think you can have one without the other. Really effectively, okay. They'll both play. They'll both play without. They've, they've had to play without each other. But mm. no, I mean, they're, they're two world class players, and when they play together in tandem, there's no better duo going. So I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to say who one's better than the other. They're both, to me, equally valuable to Spurs. But we do mm-hmm. need them. Uh, we need Harry Kane. Uh, we need his mind to be on Tottenham Hotspur, not 200 miles up the M1 or the M6 or wherever it is. <laughs> you know, he needs to be focused. You yeah. know, and, and I mean, I mean, Son nailed his colours to the mast there by signing a four-year contract. Yeah. Son is Sp- Spurs. Son would bleed blue blood if he cut his veins. He is white, blue, and white blood. He is Spurs through and through, and. You know, from that point of view, Son playing his heart out like he does. And if Harry Kane doesn't play his heart out like he should do, then Son yeah. is more valuable. 
But if the two of them are on the pitch doing what they what they all what they did last season, uh, scoring goals and making goals for each other, uh, th- that that that's what we have to hope is going to happen and happen very very soon. But I, I'm just a little bit concerned about Harry. You know, yeah. I just you know, I know you're a big fan of Harry's, David. But I, no, 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 give us your concerns. Look, I, I'm concerned too. I'll be honest with you. I was expecting him to, you know, really step up against Palace. I was, you know, and it didn't happen. So look, give me your concerns. Just because I'm a Kane fan, it doesn't mean I don't want to hear them, my man. He had the fewest touches in the first half against Palace. I think even Eric Dyer had more than him, and Eric Dyer went off after ten yeah. minutes. <laughs> You know, so that, yeah. that that speaks that speaks volumes. And I made the point before he wasn't at his usual cajoling self, trying to get players to do things that they weren't doing. He just seemed to be strolling around and wasn't even tracking back and uh, go hunting for the ball in midfield as much as he he did it a bit, but not as much as he usually does. So, you know, if, if Harry Kane cannot get his game up for next Sunday against Chelsea, then I think we have real reason to be concerned. Yeah, I agree. You know. Give him Thursday off. Let him go home and play his golf or whatever he does. But get him firing on Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon against Chelsea, you know, because that's a game I'm going to be watching from behind the couch. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, if you have room behind that couch, I'm sure I'd like to come over there, lad, 100%. You, you know, it's, it's just, um, it, you know, I, I heard Chris's comment about we have to attack Chelsea. Yes, we do. But we have to do it cutely. We cannot attack Chelsea with a, with the Aussie Ardila's famous five going up front that will get murdered. We've got yeah. to have the holding midfield and spring the attacks from that. And which means I would I would I think Brian Hill would be an absolute godsend to play against Chelsea. Yeah. yeah. Get him get his head down, run at them, you know, cause them a bit of panic and uh keep it keep it tight in the midfield, but but be be expansive, be brave. Even it's especially, I would say, going against his compatriot and maybe Cesar Aspilicueta as well could be interesting. You know, it could probably well, take. Aspilicueta is no chicken. He's thirty something. Yeah, you know, Hill, Hill should be going past him. Like, and like, Tiago oh, Silva has right? lined up even alongside Aspilicueta, and then Rudiger has actually been the young one uh, of that defense. Bloody hell, Silva's nearly qualifying for a bus pass. I mean, geez, he should be able to get to buy him. You know. <laughs> you no, know, you know, no, that, that, that Chelsea defense, like Chelsea, Chelsea based their game on a very strong attack. But, uh, you know, I think, I think, you know, we we've got to say to them, right, lads, we've got a good attack as well. And your defense is your defense is heading for the for the the uh, what you call it, the uh, the Derby and Joan Club. You know, the old the old people's home. No, so, they're all going to be lawn bowling act, act. Yeah, the lawn bowling club after this. Yeah, Philip, yeah, absolutely. But again, go back to the defense. The only worry is there. Like, I mean. We've got no Dyer looks like he's out for a while. Mm. Um, Tanganga can't play, he's suspended. Uh, you know what I'm heading to next, lads. Um, uh, number six choice centre back, <laughs> Mr. Ben Davis. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully, Pascotti has actually gotten that spot above him, is what I would say. Maybe he's now, you know, head of the yeah, pecking well, order. Joe Rodan, Joe Rodan looks like a cert to start. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and do you think do you think Nuno will be left with no option but to throw Sanchez or Romero in the side? He's going to have to throw one of them in and hope yeah. that they have been training properly. You know, maybe maybe yeah. Rod, maybe this isn't the game to start um, uh, Romero on, but I, I would love to see Romero up against Lukaku. I would love. Oh, I would. Yeah, play. I would love it. You know, especially fresh off maybe the. Yeah. Definitely, and especially fresh off, you know, a, a, a great escape, you know, from from Croatia as well, you know, like kind of uh, Steve McQueen esque, maybe hopefully uh, from Romero and uh, and from Gio, but maybe yeah, I kind of agree. Maybe that defense, you know, is going to have to be somebody that hasn't been in the squad in some time, like you said, maybe Sanchez or Romero, uh, yeah, but maybe uh, I think so. Yeah, I don't think like we, you know. Play if you have to play Davis, play him on Thursday, get that out of the way, but put in a real centre back on on Sunday because we're playing yeah. against some serious, serious operators there in that Chelsea forward line. You yeah. know, we cannot afford any passengers. Absolutely no passengers at all. Like it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna it's gonna be like the Alamo on Sunday. We're gonna have to defend like hell, but hopefully get to the, the the creativity up front that we can keep Chelsea pinned back as well, you know. Mm. And, uh, the, the only thing that I'm not I just I just comment on um, um, Emerson's debut. Yeah, like I mean, there was a few. There's a okay. Imagine your first game in, you're up against Zaha. You know, yeah. and I mean, let's face it, he got skinned a couple. And also, of less than a week of training as well with the squad. Yeah, he didn't do too badly. He showed so he showed to me now. So he, you know, he's got something. Give him a chance. You can't be a world beater. 
Like I saw criticism on him with some of the sites. Oh, you know, we got Rob paying for whatever we paid for that guy. He's useless. One game in, and some fans are calling him useless. Like, come yeah. on. I know. Um, Jesus, I mean, give him a chance. You know? See, that's the thing at Tottenham. We look, we don't like to give people a chance. I think, I think, I think things have got so bad over the last few years that we just a lot of Spurs fans are fed up, and I don't blame them. I do not blame them, you know. And they, they don't really want to give anyone a chance anymore. They want instant success. Look, I do too, but I, look, I think I've just resigned myself. Look, with Nuno and some of the new players coming in, Paratici coming in, we're trying to go down a new era. We look like we're trying to do things the right way. We can't do everything in one window. I'm just willing to see where it takes me. Uh, look, I think that's what a lot of us need to do, to be honest with you now. Ah, uh, look. Um, but look, Philip, before you go, Dark Sung G21 here. I'll bring you a bit, bit back to the Rens game here just before we let you go. He says, we lost to Pacos because of Cameron Carter Vickers' catastrophe, uh, Mr. Easy Pass. He says, not because of you. I'm sure if we used other players in those positions with you, we would have won. What would you say to Dark Sung G? Um, I wouldn't wholly agree with that. I know that the, the, the boys he mentions, they did make mistakes. But like we had the likes of Dean, Dane Scarlett playing in that match. And nobody passed to the guy. It was like, yeah. you know, he was running around like a good thing up front. He was doing his best to make space. But nobody, with no creativity. With nobody in the midfield that was passing. Okay, possibly, and uh, what's your man, Divine. Yeah. If he played, may have done something, you know. But I, I don't think so. I think that was Paco Ferreira's cup final. You know, and we, we just, uh, the team we had was not experienced enough to handle the pressure. And okay, Car Ta Carter Vickers, um, who was Carter Vickers and Winks and, who was it, and Davis, they were the three senior players on that team. None of them turned up again. And yeah. uh, no, no, I, I mean, I th I, we wouldn't have won it with the youths. So I don't think so. I don't think so. I think yeah. Well, look, Dark Song G, look what I'd say to you, my man, is look, the three players you spot on, you know, because of the mistakes and that. Um, look, I, I, I'm, in, I'm in between you and Philip, to be honest with you. Look, I, I would rather give the youths a chance now more than them what I would give Winks and Davies game time, to be honest with you. But look, maybe take out Winks, bring in an end on Bele, give him a chance, take out Davies, you know, give, give someone else a chance back there. Um, but look, I fully, I, I fully, I fully get what you're saying, Dark Song G, my man. And look, I, I, I'm with you. I don't want to see Winks, you know, Davies, any of these players anymore. I'd rather watch Utes, and I'd rather at least I can tolerate them making the mistakes that these supposedly senior pros are making. Uh, Jack, do you want to say that to Dark Song G? I would say to Dark Sun G, I, I kind of agree with you. It's not just because of, you know, you know, not all, no, it's not just throwing the youth and we'll win. It is because of particular players in the squad that have actually hurt us significantly. And I think, you know, Casey Cameron Carter Vickers, I mean, it seems like even if that ball was the size of a beach ball, he probably still would have missed it, you know, in that clearance versus Pastro de Ferreira, uh, as well as catastrophe. You know, again, like he's just proven it. You know, we kind of have said we've even given him a break and have said, like, look, he might be coming, you know, a left sided center back and a back three, like kind of a specialized, unique kind of role. Uh, you know, like we've said with Darty, look, he's best in this kind of system. Uh, but it seems like Ben Davies can't even make that excuse for him. Maybe because he was in a back four that he struggled. I really couldn't care. You know, I really couldn't care. <laughs> it just seems like, you know, he's just useless. And then an easy pass. I mean, Dark Sanji, I don't have to tell you about easy pass. But yeah, Dark Sanji, I really do agree with you. It is kind of not just throwing the youths and we'll win. It really is particular players that need to be matched with the youth. And then we'll have a winning formula. Yeah. So I really agree. Big up, Dark Sound G, my man. I really appreciate the support. And um, we'll take William Kelly's super chat, and then we will we will let uh, Philip go, because th this one did come in when he was talking about Endon Belly. Look, first of all, I'm just going to give my quick thoughts on it, William. He says, if you're pinning your hopes on Endon Belly, forget it. Look, for me, all I'm saying is, is I'd rather Endon Belly play than Harry Winks. That's all I'm saying. I cannot deal with that guy in midfield anymore. Anytime he plays, we seem to lose. It's getting to the point where he's selected. And Spurs fans are just dejected straight away as soon as you see him in the starting eleven. And for me, look, although Endombele is a lazy shit, to be honest with you, he still affects the game more and what little he does do than what Harry Winks does in the whole 90 minutes. So that's where I'm at with it. I'm not pinning my hopes on Endombele whatsoever. I do think once Lo Celso is back, I do think he will, uh, Nuno will revert Daddy Ali back into midfield. So that'll probably put him fifth choice. But um, look, in terms of the Rens game, in terms of any game, I'd rather him play than, than um, Harry Winks. Uh, Jax, do you want to give your thoughts to William Kelly and then we let Philip come in? 
I know William Kelly's a really wise man, so that's probably why he's not a part of the Tongi Apologist Club like myself. You know, I know he just knows better. David, he seems like a guy that knows better. You know, of course, he's had, you know, 30 to 40 years of, or I think, yeah, 20 to 30 years of, you know, of going through this. And he's probably seen even plenty of Tongis before him, you know, come through the club and, you know, not meet the potential. But William Kelly, all I can say is, you know, I'm, I am a bit disappointed to find out maybe you might not be joining the Tongi uh, Library uh, Book Club but as well, William Kelly, really do appreciate you. And yeah, you might be right. If we're pinning our hopes on him, uh, you know, making a resurgence into the squad, that is a high hope considering his attitude, considering his his personality in the squad as well. That's a bit, you know, kind of sickening sometimes. But all I can say is, you know, if we're saying we need creativity, if we're crying out for creativity, all I will say is even, you know, 45 minutes of Tongi could produce more than maybe 90 minutes of Harry Winks, even whipping off Tongi at halftime, you know, it'd just probably be better than, you know, playing 90 minutes of, of Harry, of Harry Winks. So that's all I can say is if, if Tongi can give us 45 minutes, I still would think in his lard ass form, he would still be able to produce plenty for us. 100%. And Philip, what, what, what would you say to William Kelly, my man? Well, I mean, yeah, listen, we've been very critical of Ndombele over the last few weeks. I mean, rightly so. I mean, the guy is getting paid. He's stealing a living at the moment, really. Um, like, okay, he said he's had personal issues. His wife had a baby or his partner had a baby. Maybe that's kept him up awake at night and he hasn't been able to train properly, whatever. No excuse now. I saw training videos there of last week, and he seemed to be fairly well integrated. He was smiling. He was laughing. He was looked like he was in there. So let's let's give him a chance. He plays on Thursday night, plays a blinder. But let's face it, he, he could do more in 45 seconds on the ball than how he wins to do in 90 minutes. So, you know, <laughs> let, 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 let's get the Sheffield United in Dombele back with the goal from the impossible flick over his head. <laughs> yeah, still to let's this have day. That. Over the yeah. Aaron Ramsdale, the 50 million pound Aaron Ramsdale as well, we must yeah, well, say. I, mean, I, I don't think Harry Winks could do that, you know. Yeah, because Harry Winks claimed the fame as the fifty yarder from the halfway line last season against who was oh. it? You know, that was a true ball to Garrett Bale. That was no, I thought it was a back pass to the goalkeeper. <laughs> Our goalkeeper, not their goalkeeper. Like that wasn't it? Some, <laughs> some, some crap team like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, let, 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 let's let's hope and Dumbly can do it on Thursday. I mean, nah. it'll be like getting a new player into the club if he does, really, you know. 100%. I couldn't agree more. Well, look, William Kelly, thank you so much for your support, man. A very treasured member of the Harris Army. Big yourself up. And I hope you're enjoying life over there in Osma, man. Well, look, Philip, thank you very much. Uh, before we let you go, look, Ellie plugged the show earlier. Is there anything she missed? And second of all, will you be joining me at half line tomorrow for a preview to Renz? Yeah, I'll be around tomorrow, yeah. I say I'm in my new house now, so I'm free. No, mo no house moving. Nice swanky um, yeah. headboard there as well, I see. That was that? Nice swanky headboard there as well, I see. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, and I found my Spurs shirt as well today, so I'll get you a photo. Nice. Back. Yeah, the, yeah. I mean, I mean um, some of the stuff I've come up with now is, I mean, it's, I, I would class myself as knowing a fair bit about Spurs, but some of this stuff I didn't even know. It was just, you know, it's off the wall, some of the things that happened to Spurs over the last hundred years. So it'll be interesting. It'll be, it's not like a history lesson everyone falls asleep in usually, you know, you know, school, God, not history again. It's his, it's history of something we all love. And uh, it'll give an insight as to how our club got to where it is. And also how much we hate the Arsenal and why we hate the Arsenal. Especially why uh, we hate the Arsenal. Look, no, I don't think anyone can ever fall asleep listening to yourself and Ellie anyway, that's for sure. Look, two of you entertain us a lot, entertain us a lot with very, very valuable points and good comments as well. So look, Philip, I really appreciate my man. And uh, yeah, look, we better let you go. Look, you, you, you've had an early start to the day, you know, moving house and everything else. And uh, I just want to say, I hope you enjoy, you know, um, where you're living now. I hope you enjoy, um, you know, the new era in your life. Um, you know, and I really do hope you enjoy yourself down, down where you are. I will indeed. And I'll see you Wednesday. See you Wednesday, Philip. Right. Or no, right. tomorrow, tomorrow. We'll tomorrow, see you tomorrow, Philip, yeah. Nice tonight, anyway. I've forgotten the day of the week. Monday. Tonight's Monday, but I'm doing the Renz preview tomorrow. Oh, right. okay. yeah, fine. No, problem. Today. no problem. See you then. Right. Perfect. Yeah, See you then, Philip. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. What an absolute legend, guys, and Philip. Absolute channel legend. Boys, everyone, get in and give Philip the big up in the comments. Absolutely brilliant. I love hearing from him every time he's on. He's the voice of reason. Uh, Jason Bell, new channel member. Big yourself up, my man. I really appreciate it. If you're a white member, the link is up in the community uh, section. Just get on it and come on. And that stands for any white member. Big yourself up. Comments are the chat is still absolutely flying, guys. Uh, 
I want to say to everybody, make sure you do smash that like. Likes are a bit low on 80, 80. So we usually get to 150. Let's see if we can get there. Everybody, if you haven't smashed that like button, um, you know, look like like Jason Bell here. You know, go and get your uh, channel membership, guys, and come on and have your say also. Um, and as well, get your super chats in, guys. It helps skip the queue. Um, you know, if you're like me in a cake shop, sometimes you get a bit sweaty. You see that cake with the nice cherry on top. And, you know, you can't wait in the queue just in case someone else gets that last one. You call the baker over, hand them double the price, and you take that cake. So, guys, get the super chat in, guys. It's a great way to support the channel. But, look, let's keep moving. Let's keep moving because we do still have a few to get to. Um, so, look, let's bring on the next one. And we're just moving through channel legends here now. So, we are moving through them. We have Brad Matthews, of course. Brad Matthews, who sang the song for the Harris Army. Did yourself up, my man. How are things? Uh, good, thank you. Good, thank you. I'm on a uh, a week's holiday, so uh, so no work in the morning. So uh, doing the fan show on a Monday night, which will probably be the Tuesday night, but the Tuesday morning by the time I've finished, uh, yeah, this is not a problem. So yeah, no, I'm 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 good. Uh, uh, well, uh, un unfootball wise, I'm good. Yes. <laughs> mm. I look, I want to say thank you so much for waiting as long as you did. It's been a crazy yeah. night, man. Things are just yeah. popping off here. Um, so look, I really do appreciate you waiting as, as long as you did. But look, my man, you know what do you think of the Palace game? Let's hear your thoughts on it. Oh, okay, uh, I, I guess first thing. What was, went wrong first? Maybe what went wrong? Well, the first first? Thing that went wrong was the international break. That's the first thing that went wrong. So, <laughs> so Good we point. Had, yeah, so we we had uh, injury. I mean, okay, you, you can't predict injuries, but you had the debacle with with the you know Argentine Brazil thing. Yeah. Then Son got injured, uh, Skip was injured, uh, Bergen was injured. So that so you you've got no you've got no control over that. So you think, well, when we get to the game, there's going to be a different team. We we know that. But then you think, okay, so you replace light for light. So Son, you say, okay, Son's out. Uh, you bring Brian Hill in. Uh, Bergwin's out. Well, then Lucas comes in. So you think, well, that's, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Yeah. But then you think, well, the midfield looks a bit dodgy with Nat without Skip. Skip and Hoiberg. Hmm. Then you see Skip play and train, and you think, oh, great. So you think, well, okay, that's brilliant. We've we've won three games with Skip, Hoiberg, and Deli Alley in the midfield. Great, not a problem there. But what does he do? He completely changes it, brings free to, brings in the man that we shall not may say his name because he's been spoken about too much tonight yeah. already, as the third midfielder. And you've, you've literally got a defensive midfield. Now, I believe the idea was that by playing Emerson and Regulon as attacking fullbacks, they push up, the midfield controls it, the fullbacks push up, and there's your, your attacking part. Problem was, the midfield didn't control it. The yeah. midfield had no control. We got totally bad in the midfield. And uh, they're all to blame. They all had poor games. Uh, so you had that, and then you have the situation with with Larice, who I, I've stuck up for in the past, sending yeah. out hospital balls for for Dyer. So Dyer goes down in the first ten minutes. You think, oh yeah. no! And I, I actually, I actually commented to a mate of mine on WhatsApp. I said, oh, we're down to our last our last two defenders. <laughs> three Literally, of you, yeah, three of you, Drew <laughs> Davis. Ha ha ha! Oh. And then of course, what happens in the second half? Uh, Tanganga get sent off and suddenly we're down to 10 men. We knew at half time that, that we had to change things, but but Nuno didn't. So Tanga gets sent off. And then you think, well, okay, okay. We we the, I thought the defense, I thought Rodon came on and played well. I thought Emerson was doing all right for his first game. I thought Regulon was defending pretty well. Uh I thought the defense Tanganga was defending well. I we weren't going was, well for it, but yeah, our defense was actually weirdly solid was still. Doing really well. Yeah. So you think, when we get down to 10 men, you think, well, okay, well then, uh, 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 draws a good result here. So let's keep him out for half an hour. Uh, and he's got no choice but to bring Davis on, unfortunately. No matter what, what we think of him, that's the only choice he had to do was to, to make that, that centre bet pairing again. Yeah. Well, he could so have brought they, on a mole. He could have brought on a mole. Uh, like, well, I, I don't know how how I don't, I don't know how good Amari is, but yeah, that's a good point. He could have done, but I guess in that situation, just, just quickly, Brad, would you ex like their expects? I would expect from someone like an Amore coming into the team. You know yeah. what I mean? But not a Ben Davies, who's now like 28, 29, 30, whatever he is, who, who's had so much experience. 
are you at the point, would you say, where you would rather see an Amole come on now than a Ben Davies or something? Well, because the same things keep happening. I think Nuno, uh, first things first, is quite a safe manager. So he'll mm. he'll bring on who's trusted. And, and yeah, that's true. Davies is, is a, an international player. He's played international centre-back for Wales, whatever. So whatever you think about him, and I, I don't think he, I think he's an average player at best. Yeah, bring him on. The problem you have there is that when you give away the penalty, and someone said to me today that uh, Davis was waving someone in the crowd. Well, no, he's actually waving at the linesman because the linesman waved straight back at him when he handball handballed it. So, <laughs> so, you, so, you, so you can see, so you can see the penalty, and it's like, hang on a minute, every defender in the league has learnt to do that. Yeah, when they're defending, but for some reason, Davis puts his hand out and it's a penalty. So you think, oh, penalty. Then you think, well, actually, Larice is quite a good keeper. So Hart takes the penalty. Larice is literally diving before he's even hit the ball. And I've never understood this with goalkeepers. I've never understood it. The penalty was a really rubbish penalty. I could yeah. have saved it. If he'd have stood there and saw what he could have saved it, but he didn't. So, all right, I'm not criticizing Larice because he's a, he's a decent keeper. So we're one nil down. Okay. So now you have to make changes because you have to score to get the draw. You know, you have to score now, otherwise yeah. you're going to lose. You've got Nonna Belly on the bench. You've got uh, Brian Hill on the bench. But he didn't make the move. And I'm thinking, why? Why didn't he do that? And 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 the rest is history. You know, they bring on, as soon as they bring on their player from Celtic, you think he's going to score. You know, and what was he doing the first, first part he's involved in? He scores. And then then it was, you know, game over by that stage. But even yeah. at 2 0, just throw caution in the wind, bring on your attacking players, you know, Let, let's yeah. go down, fight him. But he didn't yeah. do that. And I, uh, okay, the internet went mad. Oh, Nuno out, Nuno out. That's absolute crap, you know. If, you, if you're all putting, oh, Nuno out, crap, because it's one game. Everyone I've seen on, on, on these shows, I've seen on TV, on Twitter, have said he made a mistake. He made a mistake with the team selection and didn't make any changes. We all agree with that. But it's one game. And you'd like to think that he and the team will learn from that one game and not make the same mistake again. Uh, Kane, I thought, had a very poor game. But I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt because if you saw the game against Poland, he got absolutely battered. Yes. So he's gone through the Euros and then all that fuss with the Man City thing. And he goes against Poland and they actually batter him. And he comes yeah. through it. And so you think, okay, he's playing against Palace. Maybe he's, he's you know, he's really knackered and really sort of carrying that. So he doesn't give you what he normally gives you. Mm. And and then you think, so, so I'm, I'm willing to give him the benefit of that. I, I still believe that he will give 100% for Tottenham. Uh, yeah. You know, but that one game he was poor, and, and you know, we all love Kane, and we're allowed to say if he had a poor game or not. It's not, it's not. I'm not joint. I'm not a Kane hater or anything like that. But he had a poor game on Saturday, and I think yeah. I'm willing to believe it's to do with the fact that he got battered again against Poland, and that that led up to that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was just a. It was. I thought the whole lead up to Saturday was weird. Nuno in the press conferences was weird. You know, it, there hasn't been a normal one though, Brad. I no, would say there hasn't, hasn't been a normal press conference. Yeah, it hasn't. And it was, it was, and then they, I, I mean, I made the comment earlier tonight that they looked like they were playing on drugs. They looked like they were not there. They looked like they were playing, looking at the sky. Oh, lovely blue sky today, isn't it? You know, <laughs> what a great day to be out in the open, you know. And yeah. That, they looked like they were playing. And, and we just have to put it down to it was one of those games where the players were bad, the coach got it wrong, everything, the injuries, it all went wrong. Yeah, and, and that we have to hope that that they bounce back against Chelsea. Uh, that, who knows what players will get get back against Chelsea? Because I think someone said it earlier. We've had heard nothing from the club about whether you know what the injury situation is with all the not only Son but Bergwin and, and all these players. Yeah, you know, and the guys that are in Croatia and that we, we haven't said anything. They, they'll be back. The guys that are in Croatia are expected back Saturday, the day before the Chelsea game. Right, so you'd say that you'd say that one of those will play because yeah. Tang Tanganga will be obviously uh, uh, be suspended. I'll oh, go back to Tanganga. I, I do feel sorry for him. It it was he did what everyone expected to do when Zaha was through. It was a professional foul. Everyone, you know, thought yeah, you do that. I mean, it wasn't very subtle, but yeah, that, that's what we we and that that's where I think we miss Bergwijn because Bergwijn is normally helping the right back. 
And yeah. and in that particular instance, the guy was away and, and they had to get Zahar. And then, of course, Zahar reacts how Zahar always reacts when he, he gets fouled, you know, like it's been the, the biggest sort of uh, the biggest injustice since the last big injustice. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, he fronts. And to be fair to Tanganga, he sort of like he sort of stood his ground. He didn't sort of didn't do anything. And then you know the referee had no choice but to, to book the two players. I mean, certainly Tanganga, the booking was for the foul, professional foul. And then you think, well, okay, he's fired up. He's the adrenaline. I mean, I'm I'm a classic guy, but if I drop something in the kitchen, like a, a glass on the floor, I'll kick the rubbish bin. I'll get really upset, and the red mist will descend. I'll kick the rubbish mm-hmm. bin. So yeah, so Tangang is in that situation where the adrenaline's going. He's really angry. Unfortunately for him, in the first three or four minutes, there's a a, a, a situation where he's got a tackle to go for, and he goes for it and he gets it wrong. He mistimes it. I thought it was harsh on Saturday, but that was just the Tottenham bias talking. On Sunday, when I looked at it again, I thought, yeah, no, it was it was a yellow card. Yeah. And he's off the pitch. And, and yeah, you have to – but he's a sort of guy that you think he'll learn from that. Hopefully Nuno will have a word and say, look, you know, you made a mistake, but, hey, you come back stronger and, you, you know, you learn from your mistakes. Right. 100%. 100%. Um, look, guys, I just let everybody know, look, you know, Jack Sowlad has come down to see him. You know, he wants to take him out for a few points. And that. So, um, look, guys, we are going to let Jack uh, clock off here early. Oh, right. massive thank you for Jack for even showing up today when he could have no, been spending no, the I mean, So, I, I really mean, appreciate you, my man. Still, I mean, David, it's all work at the end of the day. I mean, the outlaw definitely has to understand that. He's got to understand that as well. I mean, it's it's an expensive place to live in, so he's got to understand that. But um, as well, I would say, you know, really appreciate the Harris Army. And honestly, it's always been a blast. Even I've been kind of just uh, kind of uh, as much as I'm going to have fun later, I will say it was been an absolute blast today uh, speaking to everybody. Absolute legend lineup. You know, I wouldn't even say, David, you know, we first we thought a front three of legends. You know, now it's practically a full 11 of, 11, of, of legends <laughs> that we have at the Harris Army, honestly. And yeah. we have more squad depth in the Harris Army than even Spurs have alone, is what I would say. Uh, absolutely brilliant. But Brad, really great to talk to. Chris, it was great to talk to before. Of course, Philip, it was great to talk to. Ellie, brilliant to talk to. Joe Grimes as well, amazing to talk to. Everyone else, I just honestly love talking to the Harris Army. Really appreciate it. I will be actually taking the day off tomorrow as well. Just that's where I'll be spending the whole day with the Outlad as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so everybody, I will be gone tomorrow. But I know David can hold, hold down the fort plenty well without me. He's done it plenty of times before. Even with just a phone, he's been able to do it. So I know it'll be uh, handled well, as well as Philip will be, you know, taking over for me tomorrow as well. So it's going to be all in good hands. Like I said, the squad depth is unbelievable. The squad depth is unbelievable. <laughs> uh, but everybody really do appreciate it. I'm going to go, yeah, have a couple of pints, maybe enjoy a bit of ceviche uh, with the have outlet. Well, but doing, everybody, Jack. have a good night. Appreciate you go, Jack. You. And look, I definitely will hold down the fort. For, uh, for Look, Jack, you held it down while you let me go away camping with the outlet and a bit of bliss and peace for two days. So look, mm-hmm. my man, you go off and enjoy yourself. Tell the outlet I said hi. And uh, I really hope you do enjoy yourself, my man. Appreciate it. Appreciate the Harris Army as well. Good night, See you, everybody. Jack. Jack. What an absolute legend. Big up, Jack. Everyone wish Jack a good time with his outlet. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brad, just a couple of super chats to get to here quickly. Yeah. Uh, Joe says, big week for Nuno. He needs to show he can set up a team who can attack on the front foot. If he is unable to do so, this then uh, means he needs to be sacked. Ooh, harsh. What would you say to Joe, Brad? Uh, I'd say that's, that's a little early and a little harsh. Uh, let's let's not forget, Nuno had a, a good reputation at Valencia for playing really, really good attacking football. Mm. And I, I believe they stormed the uh, Spanish League or La Liga, or whatever it's called, and, uh, to get a top four spot when he was there. Uh, I've seen him uh, discuss where he's They've made tactical changes uh, to win games. And, and that's why Saturday was was all the more mysterious, because he didn't do that. So yeah. I, I, I think, yes, I agree. He has to set up a team that, that, that can attack on the front foot. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Uh, if he's unable to do so, he needs to be sacked. Well, it's a little early for that, a little early. Yeah. And look, I'll, I'll go back to what I've been saying since, since pre-season, since I was first on this show. It's a transitional se- uh, season. He has to learn what players he can use, what players he can trust. The players have to know that they can trust him. The players have to know how he how he plays the game. It's going to take a season to do this. It, it, it was the same under Pochettino. You know, Pochettino yeah. produced the best Tottenham teams I've seen in my lifetime, and 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 yet it still took one season, that first season, to to get that right. 
to get yeah. rid of the players he doesn't want, that sort of thing. And and we all talk about certain players. Maybe it will take Nuno a season to think, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah we've got to get rid of these players. Yeah, um, but Yeah, so I think that's a, a little bit harsh. Yeah. Look, Joe, what I would say is, look, he definitely, he definitely does need to prove to a lot of people, you know, that he can set up a team that can get on the front foot. I, I fully agree with that. Look, sacking him, uh, you know, for four or five games into the season. Look, you know, Arteta hasn't even been sacked at Arsenal. He's won one out of four, <laughs> you know. Uh, look, Joe, I get where you're coming from. But look, I do think maybe we need to give Nuno more time than that. That's for sure. But big up. Everyone's entitled to their opinions. And big yourself up, my man. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Joel H says, evening, David. How are we, mate? Yeah, look, Joel, man. I'm all good. I'm an absolutely flying form. I'm buzzing, my man. You know, looking forward to the Europa Conference League game Thursday, then Chelsea, then Arsenal after that. I can't wait, my man. And I hope things are good with you. Big yourself up, Joel. Um, and good to see you, my man. David, name of kings, name of champions, name of warriors, and name of winners. He yeah. says, Jack, what do you think of Kim Min Jae, who we almost signed last year, killing it at Fenerbahce and big clubs, eyeing him now, Uzel raving about him? Um, Look, Jack's not here. I'll be honest with you. I, I don't know anything about Kim Min Jae at Fenerbahce. So, look, David, what I will do, what I promise is, is I will get Jack to give you the lowdown on it Wednesday night um, at the start of Kaneki. Ask me, my man. I apologize. I should have read it before I let him go. I do apologize. Brad, maybe do you know anything about Kim Min Jae at Fenerbahce? Uh, I, I presume that's the, the South Korean guy that plays that, that's on the that's, that that's that the centre back. That's the centre back that we tried to sign that time. Yeah, that, that is, is that the same one? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. So the only thing I know is is, is what I've heard that we try to sign him. And he's a he's a decent player. Uh, although I did hear that he was a sort of player that would would be a fringe player and would work his way into the team. Uh, he's doing it well at Fenerbahce, Turkish League. You know, does that mean anything really? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I would presume that Turkish League is quite a hard league to play in. But uh, if you're a decent player there, I, I, it's not like you're a decent player in, in Serie A or, or La Liga or, or the German League. So, uh, but, but yeah, we did try and sign him. So, uh, but then there's a lot of centre-backs out there we should have signed. Yeah, that's uh, true. We're interested in, so you know, it's just, he's just one of many, basically. Yeah, that's true. Look, they call him the Korean monster. But David, look, like I said, I don't know much about Kim Min Jae, uh, but I promise you, I will get Jack to let us know how he's going on at Fenerbahce to, uh, Wednesday evening at the start. Can make you answer me? Tune in, my man. I'm sorry, but I appreciate the support, man. I really do appreciate the support. Actually, Dark Sung G, you know, you can give me the lowdown in the chat on, uh, on Kim Min Jae at Fenerbahce. You definitely know. Says to be fair, we used two subs before we could use Tangai or Hill. Also, at that point, who would Nuno sub off? Um, one of those two. Um, who would he sub off for? One of those two. Try Pierre Emil Hoiberg or skip a centre back to save subs, in my opinion. Um, yeah, yeah. Look, uh, yeah, look. He at all costs he doesn't want to see uh, Ben Davies at all, Brad. So that's why he's saying maybe use um, uh, a Hoiberg or a skip at centre back, and then that may. He could have had the, the subs to try and make an attack and change. Um, look, he should have brought on Gail Way before that. But, um, look, I fully agree with you. Um, he did make two subs before we could have used Tanger or Gail, but I was very shocked not to see Gail at all, to be honest with you. I thought he was Sart to start. I thought Sart, we'll see him come on at half time. Sart, you'll see him come on at 60 minutes. It didn't happen. And after that, then I was kind of resigned that we, that we probably won't see him. And I do think it's a shocking decision, to be honest with you, that that, um, you know, we, we, we didn't see him. But, um, no, look, I fully get with you. Uh, as far as trying Pierre and Heiberg and Skip, look, I probably would have done the same. You know, I, I like to play a bit of football manager. Sometimes I do try that if I get a sending off, see if I can get away with it. It doesn't always work. But, look, I definitely see what you're saying, Dark Sonji. Big yourself up, my man, and I really appreciate the support. And um, I have one more to get to here, and it's from Joel again. Big up, Joel. Says, did you see we wanted 40 million for Winks? Ridiculous. Yeah, man. Look, it is. It's absolutely shocking. I don't know where this price tag is coming from. I would take four euro for Winks, honestly. You know, I take four euro and go and get myself a chicken fillet roll. It satisfied me more than what ever, ever Harry Winks has ever done. I can tell you that. But um, no, nah, look, it is ridiculous, my man. Look, we need to cut price, get them gone 10, 15 million, take it and move on and, uh, and uh, do, do, do something with that money. But big up, Joe. Big up, Dark Sun G. David. Big up, David. 
and, and Joe as well. I really appreciate all the super chats, guys. Keep yeah. getting super chats in. It's a great way to skip the skip the chat. Sorry, Bradley. I could say that was a, a really good super chat uh, earlier that said that you know we we valued Winks at forty million, and yet we valued Truor at thirty. Oh, right. that was by um, oh, yeah. uh, Tim Man 007. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, a very very good comment. Uh, I would go ten million for Winks and twenty million for Truor, basically. So you know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, hundred percent, hundred percent. But look, Brad, looking forward to Thursday night. Um, you know, who who um who do you want to see in the starting lineup? Well, I think we've got no choice at centre back. I think I think Tangang has got to play. He's, he's obviously suspended for the Chelsea game, but he won't be suspended for that game. I think Rodon's a possibility to play for Chelsea, so you'd, you'd like to give him some game time. So, and I'm as you say, the other guys aren't back in the country till Saturday anyway. So I think you've got to go with Rodon and. Tanganga at centre back. Uh, I would like to see a, a team. I'm not saying a second team, but a team where you've got your big gun players on the bench. So we don't have the situation that we had with Pacos, where where we were doing badly at half time, but we had a lot of youth on the bench, and we we couldn't really make any changes. So I'd like to see a, a weakened, well not a weakened team, but a second string team playing. Uh, I, I'd like to give Kane the week off, yeah, uh, just so he gets totally fit and totally rested. But that's going to be difficult to do if we haven't got Sonny. Uh, do you do you give Dane Scarlett the, the nod and say, look, you're you're responsible for it? Yeah, uh, certainly players like Tango Nombali, I think, has to play. I think you've got to play that, and even Brian Hill, you've got to play these sort of players. Uh, it's going to be difficult because it's a sort of situation now where. I mean, this is the problem. Is this is probably going to be the hardest game we're going to have in the group stage? Is is Rennes away from home? Yeah. But if it was say uh, I don't know the the, the I don't know where they're from uh, at home, and then you, you could play a second team, you would probably get through it. But this game, you have to be careful because you 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 don't want to go there with a second team and lose or or draw because you don't want to you don't want to dent the confidence even more. You want to get some sort of winning mentality and some sort of momentum going. So it can be a very, very tricky game to, to pick a side for. Uh, yeah. But then again, you know, Nuno probably gets paid millions of pounds to do that. So, you know, uh, you know that's that's up to him. Uh, yeah, it's going to be, that's going to be a difficult one, Matt. It will, it will. But look, Brad, my man, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate your time. Like I said, I appreciate you waiting for as long as you did, my man. No problems, anytime. <laughs> no, absolutely brilliant. And look, I'll be in touch, Brad, and thank you very much. Anytime. And don't forget, no click, like, and subscribe. No, I really appreciate it. And everyone, big up Brad in the comments. Look, he's been a great guest to us over the, since we started really doing the fan shows. He's been absolutely brilliant, top guest. We always look forward to having him on and hearing his opinions. He, he brings a bit of calm. You know, him and Philip one after another, it doesn't matter who's before, they bring a bit of calm to it. So big up, Brad, and I really appreciate you, my man. No problems. Great. Love being on. No, absolutely love it and guys as you can see at brad hotspur if anyone wants to follow brad on twitter there get over follow him you know talk spurs whatever it may be um yeah brian c says excellent points brad william mckenzie uh says good night brad old spur says good night, guys. Thank you, brad. a lot of people you. absolutely loving the opinions brad so look and uh you know shamu giving you the, the name of brad captain <laughs> absolutely love it shamu be, be, be careful there be careful there shamu i'm not eric clapton's biggest fan he's a bit of a he's a great guitarist but a bit of a dick but uh <laughs> we, we brad hendrix if you want <laughs> there you are so we'll call him brad hendrix from now on big big yourself up brad and i'll see you again soon my man yeah, sure. legend. Yeah. Well, good night see you brad bye-bye my man absolute another legend guys and brad you know another channel legend big up brad uh look just take this super chat here from dark song g and then we'll keep moving we've two more to get to and then we're going to end it off after that Dark Sun G21 says, look at Liverpool, they used Henderson and Fabinho as centre-backs when they had all of their injury problems. Seeing that, I would have at least tried it. Or you, it's no, 100%, I agree. I agree, look, it, look, I get it. You know, he made poor substitutions. I agree with you. I probably would have thrown a PRM and Heuberg back there. It, it, look, I don't think it would have made mistakes Ben Davies did anyway. That's for sure, Dark Sun G. And then... Um, yeah, look, uh, again, I would rather bring on a youth than Ben Davies as well. A hundred percent. I'm fully with you, Dark Song G. My man, I really appreciate the support. And look, Liverpool did get away with it. 
Look, they didn't have to reach the heights they did the season before. That was always going to be tough, but, they, you know, they definitely filled in a void and done well. And I, I think Jurgen Klopp done it just for the continuity, continuity of things as well. So, um, yeah, and it worked in his favour. So, look, why not try it? Big up, Dax on G, my man. Really, really appreciate support. But, look, let's bring on the next guest. Um, we're, uh, we're, I'm going to cut the next guest down to 10 minutes each, guys, because it is getting late here as well. I've had a really long day. But, look, let's bring on uh, Dan. My man, Dan, how are things, lad? Look, I'm a little deflated from the, from the game of the weekend, but the good thing about your shows is that it gives a little bit of time to cool off from the performances in the weekend and... I'm a little bit more calm uh, from the atrocious performance this weekend. No, it was. It was absolutely woeful. I, I couldn't agree more. So, look, look, get into it. What's your thoughts? Break it down. Well, first of all, I almost forgot my flat cap. <laughs> Thinking cap, you know, and now all the thoughts are coming to the head. So, break it down, my man. Well, first of all, um, i got to say this. When Tanganga came off with the red, we didn't go down to 10 men. We went down to nine men. Because Harry Wink doesn't count like a player on the field to me. Yeah. He just he brings nothing special to the team. We're dying for creativity. That little glimpse of Endombele magic all with his wand. Uh, and then you've got Brian Hill on the bench, who's another one. We've got so little creativity that we would have failed an arts and craft test. Yeah. Like, yeah. honestly, it was so embarrassing. And I know I was really, really disappointed with um, Nuno Espirito Santos' decisions. But I... I'm not ready to hop on the bus of Nuno out yet. I mean, we're just a week ago. We're say, saying, um, in Nuno we trust, Nuno's best manager in the world. I mean, he literally just won the Premier League Manager of the Month. Yeah, yeah. So it, the, the fact that people are already hopping on the bus, bus on him, I don't agree with it. I do not agree with it at all. No, neither do I. Look, I, I, do think, I do think it's too early. I really do think it's too early. Look, we... We have to we have to give managers a chance. Look, he got it wrong, but we won three games on the trot to, uh, previous to that. Um, so for me, I agree with you. Look, I do think it is too early. I think we have to give the guy a chance. But look, Dan, I'm, why most people are saying they want him out is because of the lack of creativity. Now, look, we all know we lack creativity, but what would you do to fix that? Who who do you think we can play to fix that? Do you think it's formation change, player change? What would you do? Well, we had the options on the bench. I mean, Brian Hill should have started one hundred percent. When we got him, we were saying when Son gets injured, he'd be the perfect option on the left. Bergwijn is injured, Son is injured. What does he do? He plays Deli Ali. Deli Ali. Yeah. I mean, Deli Ali's been playing good, but left on the left wing. I mean, come on, you've got Brian Hill on the bench. Yeah. That man can do some stuff for the ball. So there's no excuses that we didn't have the correct amount of players to be creative. Uh, you know who else is in other amount of players? Or Teta. Does that mean that the people uh that, that does that mean that he's a good manager and that he's lacked of players? No. Because he, he has players with him. He just doesn't make the they we're not gonna get on the topic of Arsenal. Because mm. they're if they if they win their next two games and we lose our next two games, then they could be ahead of us in the league. So just gonna say to end it off, uh to end off my statement, you had the players on the bench. You had your ability to play them. There was no reason why you should play him. No excuses for Nuno on this one. No, I, I agree with you. Look, he has to take a lot of a lot of blame for it. But look, managers will get things wrong over the course of their time at any club, but they'll also get things right as well. So look, I just think he has to he has to find a way to sort the creativity now. Hundred percent. Joel H says end on Billy or Hill in for Winks, and I think we will win. I agree with you. Uh, look. Where do you stand on this, uh, Daniel? Look, anytime these guys are involved in any sort of way, Winks or Davies, we, we usually end up losing. Where do you stand? Do you, st do you still want to see them given a chance, or do you want? Are you just fed up now and you don't want to see them in the Spurs jersey? I mean, the fact that we've put Winks up for forty mil—that is just a joke. I don't even think in his career he's had forty goal contributions. Yeah. How are you going to put him up for forty? Like, come on, man. Some things that we do in this club just don't make sense. And you were talking there that we don't give opportunities. Yeah, I think the problem is that we give too much opportunities. Look how long... I mean, if Ben Davis is going to have his testimonial, it's going to be quick because his career is about to end. Honestly, that man has been at this club for so long. and We've given him so many opportunities. So many opportunities. One of the chances is going to end. 
one of the chances is going to end. And then Emerson Royale's bad performance. Oh, I don't want him anymore. I don't want to see him playing anymore. Yeah. No, 100%. 100%. Look, what do you make of Emerson's debut? A lot of people slating him. What do you make of his debut? I don't think it was as bad as people are saying. Well, the thing is, when you have your debut against Saha, it's really, really hard to have a good performance. But um, there was a few times where he was just waving for the ball. Winks was playing backwards. So it wasn't all his fault, but uh, he could have had a huge improvement with his performance. It was really, really bad. And honestly, the, the Spurs official put on their admin, um, debut king. And then they put a photo of Emerson Royale. <laughs> honestly, honestly, whoever's in charge of the Spurs admin is having a day off. But, um, look, it was really hard for him when he's marking Zaha, but he could have had a lot better of a debut. 100%. And, look, you know, to round off the thoughts on the Palace game, what lessons do you think we have to take away from it? But to learn that we have to be more creative. Um, I don't want to see Winks and Davis in that starting eleven, or even in the team anymore. anymore. I mean, they're not sold by January. I don't know what we're doing. So get them out. Um, we need to have more creativity in our team. Brian Hill needs to play. I've heard a lot of people saying that um, he's not a top player yet because he hasn't proved himself in the Premier League. How is he going to prove himself if he hasn't played in the Premier League? Like, yeah. hey, it's that simple. It's that simple. So play the creative players. We have to be a little bit more attacking against his teams like Crystal Palace. I mean, if it was Manchester United, then I could understand. But Crystal Palace. Yeah. Come on, man. Come on, man. No, I agree. I agree. We definitely do. Uh, just everybody out there, make sure you are smashing that like button, guys. Let's get it up to 120, 130 likes before we end off. Um, you know, keep getting them super chats, guys, and keep supporting the channel. You know, it's a great way to support the channel. You want to get channel memberships, grab that white membership, get the link uh, in the community section, come on and have your say, and as well as smash that subscribe button if you are new uh, to the channel. But look, um, you know, Dan, look, uh, maybe looking forward to a bit towards the Ren games. First of all, you know, what changes do you, uh, do you think that Luno will make coming into the Ren's game, and who would you like to see? Well, I'd like to see Ndombele, obviously. Um, this is the type of game for him. He's going back to his hometown in France. I'm not sure if it's where he came from, but he's from France. So he needs to get those opportunities. I also want to see um, Brian Hill. These are the games where he has to be playing. He has to be playing. Um, I don't know if I want to see Harry Winks because it's a game like this. Yeah. I, I don't want to see him in the Premier League, that's for sure. But one of these games, you might maybe like a substitution in the last five minutes. Um. Maybe, maybe, but still, I, I, even in these games, I don't want to see him. But, I mean, we're not going to have the, the boys from Croatia coming back uh, for that game. We're going to have him for the Chelsea game. But mm -hmm. uh, for this game, I think we should just go not our best 11, but not our worst 11, like how we did against Paco Zeferreos, where we had no one on the bench. We had no one on the bench. So if something goes wrong, we have to have options on the bench. Maybe like keeping Harry Kane on the bench and then starting Dean Scarlett, something like that. No, 100%. I couldn't agree more, my man. Couldn't agree more. Anything else you want to talk about, lad? Um, one more thing I wanted to add. Um, in that Chelsea game, if Brian Hill doesn't start, I mean, they got the red card to the right back. So that's the place that we need to be attacking. We need to be taking advantage of that. So take control of that left side. Uh, Brian Hill can attack it. I don't want to see Deli Ali there because he's not going to cause problems. He's more, He'll come inside. And same thing with Lucas Moro. He'll come inside as well. Yeah. But um, just want to see more creativity. Just want to see way more creativity. No, hundred percent. Same here. I couldn't agree more. Look, whether that's true, Gill, whether it's true, getting in the belly in the midfield, whatever. I just want to see it. But look, Dan, why don't you let everyone know where they can find you, my man? Thanks. Of course, um, a wise head on young shoulders. So look, I'm sure people want to get over and subscribe. Yeah, guys, you can check me out at um Dan THFC. Recently, um, I've reached one hundred subscribers. So thank you guys so much for that. Uh, but more importantly, make sure you guys smash the like on David Harris on the Irish Hotspur. Get in your super chats. Get in your super chats. I've checked out the chat and it was flying. On it, it was like flying. So if you want to get your, if you want to get your comment read, make sure you put it in the form of a super chat. No, I appreciate it, my man. You didn't need to do that. That was your moment, you know, to, to plug your channel. Look, guys, do get over to Dan's channel. You know, look, I've been on it. You know, me and Jack have both been on it. It's a great channel. You know, ask great questions and it's a wise head on young shoulders, guys. So please do get over there and check it out. But Daniel, big up, my man. I appreciate it waiting as long as you did in the background, my man. And I'll see you again very soon. All right.
Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Big off, Daniel. Absolute legend. Absolute legend. Well, guys, um, Sean, are you there in the background, my man? Uh, just wait to see if Sean uh, is there in the background. And he is. He is. Uh, just wait for him to turn on his camera and we'll get him on. Uh, Brian C says, uh, congrats to Dan on the 100 uh, subscribers. Big up, Brian C. Absolute legend. Dan Ann says, I need the Virgin Mary, my man. Big up, buddy. <laughs> Big up. Um, are you there, Sean? Are you going to turn on your camera, my man? Yeah, here we go. We'll get him on. Oh, it keeps turning off. You all right, Sean? No, no, I need to keep my camera off. I'm having really bad backlighting, so... I mean, it's no, like that. no worries, no worries, bad, man. bad, bad. So I'll just keep it like this if you guys don't mind this time. Yeah, no, no worries at all, lad. No worries at all. Look, we'll give you the last ten minutes of the fan show, my man. So look, why don't you start with Crystal Palace? Okay. Um. Well, let's talk about the spacing. Yeah. I mean, we had we had nine defensive players because if you watch where Delhi played, like. 90% of the time, he was our best center back. He was in our box 90% of the time. He was put in as a left winger, but he would come back and track back and he would stay back there. So there was no outlet for there. So all we had for two outlets was Kane and Lucas. Even when Emerson or Regulon would get forward, they wouldn't get him the ball because they were passing sideways or backwards. Or yeah. Three central defensive midfielders. I was just it was just poorly set up from the get go. I was pass. We're talking about Palace. Yeah, this is Palace. You know, we should have been on the front foot. We should have been attacking them. We should have had Hill in there. We should have had Tangi. Um, even if we did have Delhi, Delhi could have played as he's been playing all season up to that point. You know. And it's just it's ridiculous how we got set how we set up. You know, it was just it was like worse than what England set up in in the Euro in the Euros this summer. It was just like so defensive. We were yeah. we were set up to lose. Yeah. Look, we were definitely set up to try and go for some sort of draw or something anyway. Look, what do you make of Nuno's decision not to use Brian Hill at all? Not 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 once, not so ever. Oh, I'm, it was ridiculous. I was—I mean, like, I'm sure every Spurs fan in the world was saying, was expecting that Hill would come on at halftime. I mean, it yeah. was just—I mean, we were just ineffective. We had zero creativity, and Hill was—I was—I'm surprised Hill didn't start. But yeah. you know, if you watch Nuno's pass, he always liked to have that nice, slick, offensive player to come on to uh, change the game in the end. So I understood what, okay, maybe not. And Delhi at left wing, yeah, okay, stretching it. But when I saw Winks, I was like, oh, we're going to lose now. I went from, I was positive. I was like 1-3 Spurs. And then as soon as I saw Winks on, I'm like, oh, we're losing 2-0. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It was, just, it, was just, it was just a bad, bad setup. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in the, uh, we got to can him either. You know, I'm not in the can. Nuno out. I'm not in that camp yet, but man, he's got to show us something else. I mean, it's like, like I've said, he's like, Sean, do you, yeah. Do you, do, you, do you think maybe it is a bit overreactionary with this whole Nuno out, considering like, you know, for the first three games, we won them. I know we lost to Palace and it was an absolute disaster. Don't get me wrong. But do you think maybe it's a, it, it's, it's, it's a bit soon? Mm. I think it's a bit soon, but you could see the writing was on the wall. Yeah, we should yeah. have lost the Wolves. We could have lost to Watford. I mean, we we could have lost the City too. I mean, but I I think just the fans having that, being there, I think they just spurred the boys on, and we played just phenomenally against City. But Wolves we could have lost to, and Watford we could have lost to. Easy, easy, no problem. So I think the writing's on the wall that Nuno needs to uh, show us a little bit something different, and kind of like with that guy. Uh, I think it was a. Uh, I forget who it was, but he was saying that we needed to, uh, you know, Nino Nuno needs to show us some get on the front foot, or he got he's got to be sacked. I'm with you guys. He we need ten games maybe, but man, next time we go against a fluff like Palace, we gotta we gotta attack them. They looked at us. They played us the first fifteen minutes, and we were in their side, and we were in their stuff. 
But then they were like, man, they have nothing. So they just turned it on and came forward at us and they just pinned us back. Delhi had to come back into the, into the box and Harry, you know, no matter how far Harry would come back, there was no getting the ball to him because you had four central defenders marking him like white on rice. So yeah. it was just, and Lucas, I mean, thank God Lucas can dribble. That's the only way we got the ball into their half on this, you know, because Lucas can dribble. Harry can't dribble. He can pass. He can turn and pass, but he cannot dribble. Never yeah. has been. I mean, never. He's never been a dribbler. So, uh, you know, having that expectation on him, I mean, does that does him not dribbling make him less than world class? No. I mean, look at Zlatan. He doesn't dribble. He just yeah. kind of posts up and does his thing and shoots and scores. Yeah. That's kind of what ha- Harry does. So, yeah. no, I just think Nuno, I've always said that managers need to go into a team and play the system that best fits his personnel instead of trying to fit your style and then forcing players to not play their style. Yeah. Yeah. That's no, what no, makes no, a good manager. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, 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 that's a fair point. That's a fair point. But look, Sean, maybe moving on to the Rens game, what do you want to see and what changes do you think Nuno can make? Honestly, I really don't care about the conference league. I would love to see all, uh, you know, all young, Kangi and and those players that need some match game time, Rodon. But the rest of it, I'm kind of with Dark Sun G. Let's just throw the kids in there. Let's see how they do. I'm, yeah. you know, I really don't care about the conference league. I would rather save our first team for League Cup, FA Cup, and Premier League. Yeah, because I could care less about the conference league. In fact, I don't want to win it because then that's man, Why? that's such a joke to come to have. To give them, to give our banter buddies. Do you, think, do you not think it'd be more? Do you not think we'd be bantered more if we didn't win it? No, because we're going to lose it to Roma. <laughs> yeah, you can see the writing on the wall there, but look, who knows? Man, <laughs> they look. Man, Roma looks good. I don't know what yeah. I don't know what Mourinho was doing last year, but man, he's he's doing it right at Roma. They probably well, they they have a better depth of squad. I'll I'll give them that. Yeah, yeah, yep, they do. Uh, Unfortunately, they do. they do. We have uh, fucking Doctor Evil. Hundred <laughs> percent. And look, last question for you, Shawnee, my man. Look, the Chelsea game. You know, what's your expectations going into the game? Are you going to like? Look, for me, I do think Chelsea are going to walk the league. I think it's tough. I do think it matters how we approach the Chelsea game. I, I, I do think we will sit in tight, but I want to see us more clinical and more, more crew. Um, you know, clinical on the break and stuff like that, and create more chances. But you know, regardless, regardless if we lose to Chelsea, uh, will, will will you turn on Nuno? Do you think? No, I'm not going to turn. They're my boys, they're my Spurs. Yeah. You know? But yeah, yeah. I mean, I have Chelsea. I have I tip Chelsea to win the league too. So yeah, there's no way. I as long as we keep it respectable, I don't I don't mind to lose. If we can get if we can get more shots off than we have since we since we lost to Blackburn back in 05 and only had two shots. We yeah. had one shot against Blackburn in 05. That game on Saturday was two shots. That was the worst since Blackburn. As long as we do better than that, I'm good. Yeah. No. But, if we don't, but man, if we don't, if, if we don't, if we don't come, if we don't play better, have crisper passing and don't sh- and don't play Winks, don't play Davies because they're useless. You know, I'll be good. And I think, and I think we should give uh, people that you know maybe they don't like practice, maybe they don't, you know, they don't perform and practice like they're supposed to, and so they're down on on uh, the gaffers list. So uh, because they don't practice well, um, but they show, you know, but these guys always show up on the pitch. Yeah, I want. I, you know, I challenge anybody to tell me that Tangi didn't have a good. Uh, show me a t- bad g- game Tangi had, a bad game, last year. He didn't. He might not have lasted long, but that's also Jose pulling him quick because Jose likes to change. So yeah. that's just all it is. Yeah. No, I couldn't agree more. Well, Sean, is there anything else you'd like to speak to uh, speak about before I let you go, my man? Yeah, except that I wish Jack was here and I'd pull his tangy card. 
because he doesn't deserve it. Too many well, McNam burgers, man. Too many, too many of those McNam burger references. That uh, doesn't show a fan to me. I'm the number one tangy apologist. Well, look, you know, next time Jack is on, um, he'll be here back here again next Monday. Look, my man, I definitely want you to come on and have that conversation with him. Anyway, that'd be interesting. Oh, I will. I will. Trust me, I'll be back. Hopefully, I'll be in a better situation that I can actually, you can see the, the disgust in my face. No, look, definitely, definitely, bro. 100%. <laughs> look, Sean, I really enjoy talking to you, my man. I really Love you, guys. It. Guys, if you want to follow Sean on Twitter, I think this is it here. He said it's at Sean THFC. So, guys, make sure you give him a follow. And like, like with Brad and everyone else, you know, get over there and chat Spurs. We all need the therapy. Sean, bid yourself up, my man, and thank you for waiting so Big long. Thank you, guys. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Big up, Sean, everybody in the comments. Big up, Sean. Absolute great guest to end on. Well, look, guys, there you have it. We are going to end it off here. It's been a long one today, guys. Three hours now. Absolutely insane. I want to say a massive thank you to everybody in the comments, you know, um, who, 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 who's been here for the whole show. I really, really appreciate every single one of you. Like I keep telling you guys, you know, the, the, these shows, this whole YouTube malarkey, it's not without you guys, without you guys who tune in, like the videos, subscribe to the channels, give us the support on the days we're down. You know what I mean? Um, you know, all the people who send in the Super Chats who who really do, it, it's a massive, massive help to the channel. You have no idea. And um, I really appreciate every single one of you as well. Um, but guys, look, there we have it. We are going to end it off here. I hope everyone has enjoyed it. You know, if you have any thoughts on what anyone was saying, make sure you do get it in the comment section underneath the video when it is ended off. But look, let's let's see who we still got here. We got Shamu. Big yourself up, Shamu. Aaron Dove, Brian C, Brad Matthews, Golden Cock, uh, William McKenzie. You know, a lot of them still hanging in here to the last. Rob Coyne, Jason Bell, absolute legends. Chris as well, absolute legend. Guys, we are going to end it. I'm off to bed. I'm going to have a, a relatively early night tonight. David's still here as well. Coover 99, big yourselves up. But look, guys, and Joel H as well. Big yourself up, Joel H. But I am off. Guys, be back here tomorrow at half nine for a preview to the Rens game. I'm hoping to have, um, you know, uh, Philip join me and um, Chris join me as well. So it should be a good one. But guys, I'll see you. And Ellie's still here. Big up, Ellie. Ellie's still here. Ellie out too. Big up, Ellie. You should be asleep already. But big yourselves up, everybody. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you. Uh, I really appreciate every single one of you. Um, and look. Make sure you, 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 you get off to Flat Cap Euro Talk as well, guys, and check that out. Jack has dropped Champions League predictions uh, with Darius, the dynamic duo, back again. It's been uh, it's an absolute great show. So, guys, do get over there and check that out. Um, and, yeah, look, I'll see everybody, hopefully, back here at half nine tomorrow. Until then, stay safe. Come on, you Spurs. In Nuno, we trust.